made you transfer? I wanted to do something different. I already have an uh, associate's degree in business administration, and I wanted to come to this school and do audio production, just like uh, music engineering stuff. So what do you want to do with that? The main goal is to uh, work in like music studios and like help with like the music creation process. Anywhere kind of in the audio recording realm is fine with me. And do you have a go-to genre of music that you like? I don't know. It's, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's all over the place, to be honest. Yeah, no judgment. <laughs> it's all over, it's all over the place. So how do you like the program that you're in now? Do you like your school? Yes, do, I really do like this school. And with this whole esport thing, I think it just made it a little bit better because like it's it's new, you know, it's, you don't do it. Mm-hmm. It's not everyone, you know, has it. And mm-hmm. it's something that I'm very interested in and have been interested in for a while. You didn't have esports at your old school? I want to say there was a club, but I didn't know anything of it. This is your first time being part of a collegiate esports team then? Yes. And how do you like it? Like, how do you, how do you feel about it? I love it, to be honest. Growing up, I played baseball. I threw senior year of my high school. I wasn't like doing anything traditional sport wise in college it wasn't until this year that i was like oh because like i saw it like i saw saw, like a poster hanging up i was like oh esports let's let's just go do it i really like it though something cool something new my friends like it so like cool what are your games that you play i play valorant for the school on like the side i i've been playing fortnite recently and i play osu sometimes so how does it feel being a part of the team? Do you like your team? Yes, I do. I pretty much made friends with all of them. Obviously, I have met them. Since a lot of things have been remote recently, I still have met them, and they're very nice kids. Our arena is being built at the moment. The Valorant mm-hmm. team should be getting in there first, so I'm very excited to play in there. What do you do to improve yourself in-game, and do you take that strategy into your everyday life as well? For in-game, I try and play every day. That's kind of like the one thing I try to do. Even if I have like a little burnout from it, maybe from like the previous day, I still try to get on and do something. Of course, you watch YouTube. There's a million of things that uh, that you can watch on YouTube. I like to watch different content creators in the in that niche just to like inspire me to play a little bit more you know do i carry it into my everyday life i do i'm very into like music production there's a lot of things you can do like like the same thing you do it every day you follow you watch youtube in that niche you like you take things you learn and you apply it there's a lot of similarities of things like if you want to do something you 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 very much have to dive deep into that niche of things you want to do if you had to guess or just kind of spitball here how many hours a week do you think you spend gaming? Honestly, I've never thought about it. I'm on my computer almost every day. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> it's up there. Uh, between between playing with friends and kind of just doing stuff by my... Welcome in, everybody, inside of the booth here for the first Overwatch game of the week. Clutch Gear alongside Asher Vok here, and uh, there's a little bit of a rivalry before we start off here. If you've been watching Overwatch League uh, in within recent hours, right now it is Florida taking on Hangzhou, but the game before this, uh, a little bit of uh, heated blood, if you will. But before we get to that, UNC Greensboro taking on uh, the University of Delaware, 2-1 and one on both ends, uh, and... Uh, well, it's going to be for UNCG. Their last game was against Fisher 3-0. and Delaware 2-1 uh, and one as well, but their last loss week 2 against ONU Overwatch. This should be interesting, but uh, it shouldn't. Uh, one of these teams will end up like with a win like the Shock. The other one will end up with a loss like the Glads in this case. Don't you remind me. You, you, you listen here. Gladiators <laughs> are a good team. Don't you ever discount them, first of all. Valiant. Oh, look. How did... <laughs> When it comes to the shots, I mean, listen, they're cool and all, I get it. They didn't want a game, maybe just finals. Uh, gladiators, that's, they're getting there. They're getting there. But honestly, I'm pretty excited for this day because when it comes to Overwatch, not a game I cast for in a long time. So compared from the old Overwatch to Overwatch 2, if you, have, if you haven't been oh, you know, around for a while, if you've been sleeping under a rock for the past couple of years, it is a very, very different meta from what it used to be. And of course, we've gone from having 6 year two team to just five. Meaning that tank and off tank combo, yeah, it's no longer there. You are going to have to choose between having that main tank and use grounded or an off tank and have to risk it all by getting the W or getting an L. And of course, these two teams are very strong. I mean, we're in what the start, maybe middle of the regular season. I haven't exactly been caught up, and that is my bad. But Greensboro versus Delaware, this should be honestly a pretty good matchup, and I'm here for it.
Yeah, both of these teams uh, looking for a third win here in week four out of week six uh, within the regular season. Started about two uh, weeks late due to the game changing from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2. So it is six weeks instead of eight weeks. So right now, teams are halfway through their season. Both of these teams sitting at two and one. And for a playoff spot right now, needing this win to give themselves a little bit of momentum and and not have to have destiny in their own hands. Uh, So right now, as it stands, uh, uh, for Greensboro, they took on a really tough Fisher team, three to nothing thing they would lose but that's a tough team of uh, Fisher we've seen them all over the map uh, that used to be the old Bay State team uh, that we that we know of from previous collegiate overwatch as well so Fisher on a tear right now 3-0 and on their side as well going into week number four uh, Albany team B and Stockton were their other two matches three and two uh, three to two so that game against Albany was close for Greensboro uh, Spartans would then take on Stockton in week two to go 3-0 Delaware uh, at the same time as well uh, looking for a good map win after or good to keep the momentum after winning three to nothing against SAU Overwatch too, so this is going to be an interesting match. And like you were saying, hey, the game changes uh, all over the place here because of the five v five and you last been here. Uh, game changes, game plays a little bit faster. Uh, so let's see what these teams are going to pull out. As the first match to play is going to be Elios, and it is going to be the well to start us off. And it looks like remember, folks, the patch doesn't go into effect until November fifteenth when Zarya goes down. For when Zarya uh, gets a little bit of a nerf, uh, so does Genji Sombra and all the other characters there. So for right now, Delaware is going to pull out the Zarya. Greensboro are going to pull out the Winston if this holds true for the next ten seconds. All right, listen, man, I'm seeing on Delaware's side, Steph out here playing Lucio. And you know, as a Lucio man myself, I am horrifyingly familiar with this map on Ilios. And you better pray you don't get caught anywhere near this well or anywhere on the edge of the map because all it takes is one single boop and you are done for. You can be caught to someone else. It is not going to be a fun time. But Greensboro out here with the Winston Mercy combo. And honestly, I'm thinking this is probably going to do some good. Yeah, the Winston right up against the Zarya, probably the best matchup if you're going to go toe-to-toe with the Zarya right now. But TBD man on that Reaper is just going to cause a lot of havoc. And look at the Zarya just running right up to the rest of this team. It's going to be a hack out on the corner and a great Bionate. That's three people inside of it. The Immortality Field saves them for right now. What an Immortality Field from Sully to save the day for them right now. Delaware gets the first flip and it's still being hacked up against right up against Carter here. No bio name has been big since then. It's just a trade by left and right here. But the railgun shot from Moonluck onto Magix is big for them. This Winston has to back off just a little bit more because now with your Mercy gone, you've got no more big main heal or no more constant heal, I should say. So it's going to be Delaware winning the first fight. Honestly, Greensboro already has lost three, maybe two. And of course, from Sully, that Baptiste immortality field has saved him so many times. And compared or combined with the Zarya, that is just going to be an absolute nightmare. And of course, we saw a couple of packs coming from the Sombra, and it looks like they have switched over. But man, that could have done some damage, maybe late game. But on this type of map, I'm thinking it might not have been the best choice. And that switch for Greensboro possibly could have been the best possible situation for them, as Delaware is sitting at a cool but rising 42, maybe 43% on this objective. And if I were Greensboro, I'd want to get in there right now. Well, they get a trade off. You get the Zarya Ooh. down, but the railgun shot hitting TVD man will trade that out entirely. But with no Zarya, no real big input for you, Greensboro has to hold off for right now. When you take a look at the all percentages, Carter with that Graviton Surge uh, compared to Naderade with basically nothing right now. I mean, you've got three ultimates with a Deadeye with a Valkyrie and a Nano Boost, but that might not do you any good. Here's the Graviton Surge that only gets the Cassidy inside there, but that's going to be enough for Greensboro to just back right off, and this is going to be final fight territory here. Yeah, and I think Attack Moons probably was prepping for a <laughs> death situation there with the ultimate, but Greensboro not looking too hot as they've lost Magic, Dino, and Shadow Wolf, and here comes Steph with a poop kill on Shadow Wolf and Naderade as well. <laughs> And that was honestly exceptionally impressive coming from Steph. Delaware looking to probably capitalize on taking this objective here. Just like that Greensboro trying to take this objective. And here comes the Reaper ultimate. 97%. And that ultimate is ready for Deadeye. But I really don't think it's enough. But then again, we are going into an overtime. And here we go. Trying to see if they can get in. It doesn't work. This is not looking so good. They trade it out though, the overclock does happen. The Deadeye finds nothing in the meantime, but Greensboro has their first chance at some hole. Unfortunately, Carter and Steph are gonna shut that down right away. And with Steph bringing down the sound barrier, it's gonna be basically every hope gone from this team. Delaware is gonna get themselves a clean 100 to nothing, not a speck of dust on the point. They win the well, they're up one nothing on Ilios. 
Honestly, they were contested so many times, but not a single point <laughs> from Greensboro. Delaware just took this 0-1, you know, round one complete that was honestly exceptionally clean. And with this next part of the map coming up, of course, you have so many spots you can capitalize from, from shots. And with the McCree, sorry, Cassidy on one side, my life just flashed before my eyes here. <laughs> <laughs> Greensboro switching over to a Widowmaker and Attack One switching over to Far, which might be a good choice here. Plenty of space to maneuver and move around, and those rocket barrages might be a bit of a problem for Delaware, but we will just have to see as this match is starting. Well, it's not too bad bringing out the Far. The only problem is Soli's been pretty good this entire game, uh, especially with that Baptiste and that Immortality field save magic shot. First shot doesn't find anything, but. Like you were saying, Pharmacy Combo is out. Maybe this is a good pick for them. Maybe it is, and we'll find out here in just a second. The Ruins second map underway, and Carter already finds a pick on the Mercy. That pocket, gone. And they start to back up. They start to run for their lives, but the only thing that awaits them is death at this point. As they back up, Steph does go down, but it's not going to matter. It's Delaware. The Blue Hens off to a running start. And honestly, Blue Hens, of course, right, they have been off to a running start. These two healers being Steph and Sully have just been on a running rampage, saving so many lives here with the combined Lucio heals and as well as Baptiste heals. And you know that Immortality people coming out. It's just been nothing but a nightmare for Greensboro. As they have been trying to get on this point, they are sitting at 0%, while Delaware is just taking this by storm, sitting at 15% and rising constantly. And it's getting so much worse and worse. It is, but they do get the res off so man advantage right now greensboro they decide to push in with that as attack moons getting rezzed up after that trade off for tv man and that's big now that you've got moon luck out i mean no possibility of a railgun shot happening but again the mercy gone so early on and delaware doing such a great job of focusing down one of the supports especially that mercy gone and now with the far pharmacy basically out of commission here natorade just has to run for their lives but you do get a headshot onto Carter, but it's not, still not going to be enough despite what's going on here. Greensboro trying to make something happen out of this when you do have two down, but now your Baptiste is gone, your heals are gone, and this is basically going to be another win here for Delaware. They just have to back up already. I don't know, you never say never. Greensboro might be able to get the point here, but for Delaware, they are at 60% and climbing constantly. The double kill for two on Dino. Five player kill streak! And there are just so many ultimates ready on both Delaware and Greensboro. But if I were Greensboro, I just might as well charge in here with those ultimates, but you have to be exceptionally careful as you might get caught in a Reaper ultimate. Or even Baptiste with that ultimate. It's not good for anybody! And here we go with the Reaper ultimate getting a kill on Attack Moon, so they have lost their far. And Greensboro, one far no down. One can hide I'm pretty sure he's got a weakness, but here comes the Widowmaker ult. See if they can try to pick anybody off, but it looks like we might get a far ult in just a second. And they lost the healer. Stefan's out. Here we go. Double kill. Oh, look, and Carter, are you kidding me? Well, they touch. That's great for them, and that was a good grab. Uh, as well, getting a lot of that in, and basically no immortality field to save you either, and that immortality field would have done nothing anyways, but uh, Sully's got the application matrix, but that's Green Boral's bank gone. I mean, the only thing you're going to have coming up here is a Valkyrie, and that's it. And you're going to have an overclock, you're going to have a sound barrier, you're going to have an app matrix, you're going to have a grab search, which is used immediately. Three people inside there, the immortality field only lasts so long as it just melts away. You straight out, the Baptiste won't be able to use that application matrix for now but with carter just running the team over the laser just brings it all down the melt is there and delaware with a quick back cap there delaware wins elios two to one nothing and they're up in the series one nothing as well was absolutely disgusting coming from Delaware. Only contested a few times and still managing to take in an attack moon. I'm probably guessing it's going to be that last minute <laughs> ultimate. The Rocket Barrage incoming with so many kills. Maybe one, two, even on Moon Carter and Solis. Absolutely impressive. Yeah, it's super impressive the way they played, Ooh. but Greensboro uh, just not able to find an answer. They get one fight win, but that was off the heels of basically four ultimates the only ultimate you didn't have after that i mean you use the death blossom you use the rocket barrage uh you you use the graviton surge and you use the nat or excuse me uh i believe it or the application matrix but you use every single thing in the bank you get the fight win sure but after that it was just absolutely over because at that point delaware was going to run the table and win that one so delaware up in the series one to nothing next map coming up is uh going to be paraiso so hybrid mode comes up next one of the new maps
uh, out here for Overwatch 2. Saw this in the beta just a little bit, but now we get to see it full on. And so for a hybrid map, I mean, we've only seen control points, and so far it's been Delaware. Uh, but maybe this changes a little bit. You never know. I mean, if, if uh, it comes to an escort point, it seems like some teams are better at escort than it is at hybrid. So uh, this could be Greensboro's time to maybe shine a little bit, but because after that 2 nothing, it's not looking great. No, it is not looking great at all. When it comes to maps like Bright so there are so many heroes you can run on here. I mean, me personally, I've seen a lot of Junker Queen. I've seen a lot of D.Va when it comes to tanks. Healer pick, of course, Lucio might be your best choice because it's like this map was made for him, right? Just bouncing all over the walls. And Baptiste might be an okay pick. Not a lot exactly room to maneuver. Mercy, on the other hand, I mean, if you pair her with a good tank, of course, you're going to have that pocket. And when it comes to... Escort. I mean, it's really tricky with Party Asol because you have a lot of points where, of course, you can get flanked. And with Delaware being such a powerful team off the bat, this might not be looking good for Greensboro, even on this map. It just depends on what kind of objective or, you know, game we are going to get in this next match. Yeah, it just depends on what their comp is. And especially, I mean, they had the pharmacy combination, which worked for a little while. But uh, for Greensboro, they didn't really work out after that. I mean, like I said, you have to use four, four ults to win a fight against Delaware. And that was just the bare minimum to do that. As I shouldn't say bare minimum. Them, but that was the way to win. The win con was the ultimates, but drive fights. Delaware's got this uh, under control, so we'll see if the teams are ready to play here uh, in this next matchup. Uh, Paraiso again, next map coming up here, one of the newer maps, and so uh, this this gets interesting because, like you were saying, there's a lot that that can run, uh, but right now, I mean, you've seen the Zar the Zarya being pulled, and Zarya is probably the best tank in the game. Diva probably coming second, uh, if that, and so you've got a lot of different options to run here. And old teams like to hold up on that high bridge area uh, right before the first point so and then second and third point I mean just the escort mode is just in insanely like just depends on how many shots you're hitting because that's a long sight line but a narrow <laughs> street way at the same time too so uh, there's the, and there's all kinds of different heights there too so we don't even want to talk about it at that point but uh, and I know in my game spot is uh, one of the uh, one of the harder uh, maps to play on especially when you have that uh, first choke point then it gets to an open, basically a full-on open area, but it's just one show going into the open, and then all of a sudden the streets just get smaller and smaller up until you get to that last point. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, for both of these teams right now, trying to find their pace onto a 3-1 uh, situation. Delaware up one to nothing after uh, winning on the Ruins 2 to nothing, or winning on, excuse me, winning on Elios 2 to nothing. And so now we're into Pata So Let's see what the teams pull out, and it is indeed going to be the Zaryas being pulled out to start. Not only the double Zarya, I'm looking at what is it? Double Reaper and double Lucy and double. Wait a minute. I'm starting to see two of two here. Am I seeing double? Is that what I'm going for here? Yes, it's a full. Yeah, it's a full on mirror comp oh here if that stays. Oh my god. It is a full. That's the first time we're going to see a mirror match here in this game. Uh, but with the losing team being. Uh, Greensboro, it's going to be the Spartans that get the defensive side first. So Delaware is going to see themselves in a mirror. Oh my god, this may be mere match. I mean, defense-wise, this is honestly not a bad comp. I mean, you have Zarya, you have Sojourn, which is honestly actually pretty good and decent picks. With the Lucio and the Baptiste as well, you're going to get plenty of heals off. But when it comes to attacking, that is the same thing. You're going to have that Lucio and Baptiste to worry about, as well as that Reaper coming in the front line for damage, maybe even the back line with a quick flank. The same goes for Baptiste. So we're honestly going to have to see how this works out for either teams. Well, let's find out. They're going to try to speed right in here. Speed boost available both ends see if they want to just use it to drop down for right now they stay on top uh in the second floor to try to get a height advantage especially with that soldier on quick sight lines here carter does get the drop kill onto magic so this would be the ghost signal if you're delaware just to run them over and run right in immortality field having to be used to keep this team up but it won't even matter they don't need to be kept up they need to be held oh! back because of all the damage that's being poured in Delaware with the quick cap, not even a minute in. They're going to get all three ticks, and they're going to get two and a half. My god, that speed boost came in clutch, especially from the Lucia, but so much going on, just completely annihilating Greensboro on this defense. And this is going to be a hard time, and here comes another kill from TBD, man, on Magix, just on a rampage right now. And here comes Azaria, and my god, this is just looking absolutely intense as both teams are really going at it. Greensboro doing their best to stay alive. That immortality field gonna have some trouble. Attack loops getting a double kill. Naderade taking out Solis and attack loops getting a little low on health, but managing to find his way in there. However, it's still not looking good. Eliminated by Carter with a pocket. Lucio on the Zarya. 
Yeah, now the Graviton Surge is out. Three people inside, or two people inside of it. No stop area to counter that either. So Carter with the amount of damage that they're slewing out is just going to be able to just bring out all the damage. And especially with the fact that you've got, I mean, Delaware, I mean, you've already got Carter building up that ultimate. Naderade's going to just get the ultimate here. And now Moonlux, Moonlux staggering out Magix is huge because that's more time wasted now for Greensboro to have to regroup if they want to fight this. I mean, Greenboro is doing their best to regroup every time, but it looks like each time they try to push in on this and stop this payload, it's just not working out for them. And here comes a Baptiste. That is going to do some major damage for Greensboro right now. Delaware pretty much looking. And that is with Moonlook on a double kill yeah. on attack moves. Oh my god, and here comes Moonlook again with another kill on Dino. Soli's getting a kill on Naderade. Oh my god, this is like the unstoppable object versus the immovable force, almost. And I say almost because for Greensboro, it is not looking too hot even when they're on the defense. They're just not even, re they're not regrouping Ooh. at this point. They're not allowed to regroup right now because now you've got the immortality field. TVD man in the back row, can't get up the stairs, was Ooh. trying to fade away but can't get up. So therefore, you lose two of your DPSs trying to front line here. And now it's just going to be a stall fight to let them know that they can hold on. Haterade does have the Graviton Surge available. Deeming if they want to use it or not. Steph doesn't have the sound barrier to counter it for right now, but about 15% will be able to do so. Death Blossom from nowhere. TBD Man's got oh. two. That's the Death Blossom in. That's the Immortality Field gone. A DPS and a Baptiste is gone as well. TBD Man's got three. The team wipe. And Delaware advances on. I don't know what TBD man is on right now, but that was just an absolutely insane wipe on Greensboro. Oh my god. And of course, with that ultimate, might be coming in from Steph in a hot second. At this point, it's like Delaware is just straight up harassing Greensboro. Not a care in the world. They're pushing the payload. They are completely and totally fine in their element. And I cannot believe what I'm watching. And here comes another Death Blossom from Attack Moon. It looks like oh. might be the best place to push it. And Connor getting a double kill. Moonlock with a kill on Dino. Oh That's my god. Wipe. Oh my god. That is vicious. Well, Graviton Surge gets everybody inside there. Carter with a 4K. Nobody's going to be able, even able to touch unless it's this Sombra. With 2 hundredths of a meter left to go, this will be final fight territory here. Death Blossom is pulled out for Attack Moon. Sound Barrier at the same time. Dino and Attack Moon's investing what they've got here. It's going to be able to get 4 for Attack Moon. So they hold off with 2 hundredths of a meter, but needing to invest a lot into it. Both sides really going to have to play for a drive fight here with less than 4 minutes on the clock. Oh my god, that Death Blossom came incredibly in clutch that very last second. There is just two meters on that objective, and they're doing their best to push it back. But Delaware, they might be saying, oh, no, 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 no. But what we're going to do here is come back with a vengeance, Greensboro. You're not about to have a fun time, and it's not going to be a good time for anyone as we are engaged in another team fight. Here we go. Well, here comes three and a half minutes left to go. Attack wounds gets rid of TBD. Man, that might be your win con more or less, and especially in a drive fight, when you can get rid of a Reaper that early on, it's super nice. And now three minutes and 18 seconds, Delaware knows that right away. They're gonna back off for right now around the corner. They're still gonna try to play this out, maybe a little bit more, but they're not backing up as far as they want them to. They do protect the Lucio out of the hack with the bubble, but that, again, forces them all the way back. So with the fight win here for Greensboro. Wait a minute, as I say that, though, whoa, Moonluck whoa, gets two whoa. with the Railgun shot. It's winnable here if you're Delaware to try to win this one out. That's four down, one left to go. And is that going to be able to complete the map? Yes, it is. Delaware mm -hmm. does get stopped in one and a half fights. But despite that, the time bank big, 249 as they complete the map on Paraiso. It's like every time Greensboro tries to regroup, no matter where they are, what other tunnel they are in, it's like they are barely even given the chance. And the moment they try to do anything, it's like they're hit smack dab in the face by a train that is the amount of ultimates coming from Delaware. And this is just honestly, you know, it's not that hard of a map. However, for Greensboro, it's looking like they are trying to navigate Pan's Labyrinth at this point with as much trouble as they are having. <laughs> and it is getting wilder and wilder by the minute. Yeah, it's, it's not looking great right now for Greensboro needing to... They had a dry fight win, I mean a partial dry fight win, but that wasn't until Moonluck and TVD Man decided to swoop right in and get three at the end. They're making it a completely winnable one to three, 4v2 situation, excuse me. So now we get to see Greensboro on their attacking side, and if this holds... three play, uh, Two players are going to show us something for the first time, a Sigma and a Moira. Uh, good, looking like they might be pulled out here. Delaware's gonna say, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Gonna play the exact same comp, and basically what 
could be meta combat at this point for them, but it's looking really good right now. Greensboro are going to have to see what they can do, especially 249 and the timing is so big. And honestly, Greensboro changing up a little bit here, which might not be too bad for them. I mean, Moira can not only put up in the same numbers when it comes to healing, but as well as damage. So we're going to see what has to happen with Dido. Maybe to see if he can get the clutch on this one as they are. <laughs> Ooh, this is honestly going to be very intense. I mean, with Delaware going to the same matchup, you're right, it is looking like a meta comp right now, but will it work? That is the huge question right now, as Greenboro is on the attack, and that Sigma Shield coming out might do them a little well. Well, let's see here if it does any well. The Rock gets blocked by the bubble of Zarya, so no, nobody's going to get knocked down, or nobody's going to get stunned for right now. Naderade, you can't really try to... Kinetic Grasp of Laser in your face luckily stays alive thanks to the healers. And now Matix is going to try to take out the Reaper, which they do trade out courtesy of the Railgun shot. So now the two supports in the play in play, plus Carter, who's still trying to stay alive. As long as he possibly can, Carter at full health, though, really can't do anything against this uh, Zarya, who's just playing extremely well right now. Disrupt the shot's just going to hold them off for just a couple of moments. Carter already at 54%, but Naderade at 61 on the same token, and you're looking for a sound barrier from Steph at 40%. Sully also with an app matrix coming up at 66. The fight continues on. Railgun shot again, trades out the DPS. It's Reaper and a soldier. TVD man actually in the meantime, switching on over to that soldier. But now they've got them stuck in this room, and now that the disruptor shot is just gonna keep them in there. Looks like they're gonna get a free first tick. There is gonna be a, a Gravitic Flux in there, which catches three people Ooh. inside. And that's gonna be the Zarya Baptiste and the Lucio all inside with no sound area to counter. Ooh. The Graviton Sarge might go all for nothing here as they just try to survive as long as they possibly can to stall. But for right now, not looking great. Two ticks up for Greensboro and the Spartans are gonna be able to cap the point. What? Where was this aggression earlier? Greensboro coming in with an absolutely murderous rampage already just a couple of minutes into this match. This is the same energy that they really need to upkeep throughout this entire thing because if anything, I really think they just, they are the sleeping giant that has been awoken almost by Delaware. And I think Delaware might have a bit of an issue considering Greensboro on the attack. And I am excited to see where this is going to go in the next couple of minutes. And here comes the Sigma Shield from Naderade getting a couple damage pings in there. Might have trapped some people up in that building, however, here we go with the Winston and Carter coming out in full force. Here they come. A lot of the teams up on the rooftops, but I so right now. They've got the Winston in the back line trying to stay up. They do get out. Disruptor shot, able to kill the Baptiste, and that's a good start for you because now TVD man can just go off without worry of an immortality field. And right now, not deciding to invest in all, so it's a good thing. Good discipline out from Greensboro. The Spartans have to back. Oh my god, and Delaware looking to capitalize. They have multiple ultimates up right now, including with Steph Moonluck and TBD Man. Might be the best time to put them up now, maybe saving it for later, as Greensboro still on the attack, however, without a healer. It is going to be exceptionally tricky, and here we go. It looks like Dino is on the comeback, and here we go with the TBD Man getting a couple of things off with Soldier. Might be a good time to pop off with that ultimate. I mean, who knows? Oh, okay, well, stunned, and here we go with TBD Man. Seeing if you get a couple kills, that immortality feels is coming out, might have saved some lives, and that is a kill. <laughs> oh my uh, god, Shadow Wolf is gonna... Yeah, immortality feels safe nothing delaying the inevitable at that point but three minutes and 14 seconds i mean delaware having to use uh basically two ultimates there to win that fight and greensboro haven't used the single one i mean i think naderade may have uh or naderade switches on over after the second group of it flux finds absolutely nothing so switching on over to the winston play now hey not a bad idea you're gonna try to dive up you're gonna try to dive these rooftops maybe to help your team out uh bring this team down just a little bit there goes the winston on the rooftop just trying to land down and find a landing spot area but is able to back off delaying the jump the immortality field used very early on from shadow wolf so delaware that's probably their green light at this point you get rid of the immortality field super early on that matrix is out for shadow wolf to try to eliminate and try to cross some damage with the proper rage going right in is going to find baptiste however the overclock trying to make something happen here as they take down step not going to matter in the process a four to two trade in favor of delaware keeps the blue hands on the defensive end and honestly, the rooftops might be a good spot to get some shots off of here. Then again, you have to be careful because when it comes to this, you have an angry Winston. That is a 400-pound gorilla that nobody wants to see even on a good day. As well as Steph, who was originally Lucio, actually. I was going to say some boops might be prime real estate here. But switching over to Zenyatta, and that is a junk rat tire. I'm here and coming in the distance. Might be able to climb this rooftop. Here we go. 
It might no. be able to. No, oh, I don't know if it it's finds on the anything hunt. in time. Yeah. Oh, no. Doesn't find man. a single thing, man. I It was it's close. Retire. Well, yeah, it was close, but I mean, it was like super low health. I think it was like yeah, like yeah, 15 yeah. health, like barely living. Uh, but percent. yeah, I, I, think, I think seeing a Junkrat tire kill, at least in my games, isn't a good thing, especially if that Junkrat is on the other team. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, three kills already for Delaware. Blue Hens looking good. 90 seconds left to go on the clock. And right now, Delaware having all the answers. Greensboro just getting shut out. And now, they're going to try a different play here. First time we're going to see the Bastion in play. Oh my god, Bastion, who has been out of Overwatch, out of commission for actually a couple of days, a couple of weeks, if I remember correctly. Because, yep. let's be honest, that ultimate was so busted. You could just spam and spam and spam. And if anything, it was not fun for anybody in any of those lobbies. But attack moves with that Bastion might be able to capitalize properly on that, especially if you have a Winston coming after you. That shield is broken instantly, and it looks like Mike was it and gets away just in time to avoid death. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, death from the Bastion and would not be a good thing, especially when you're against the Winston here. You can't really back off against that unless you have that one jump or a Primer Rage. Carter doesn't have that Primer Rage to try to get out if that happens, but Sully now getting that kill onto Naderate. Thank you to the Discord orb that is provided by Step here. And with 30 seconds left to go, it's now or never if Green 4 wants to back up for a final fight here. Unfortunately for them, Carter's going to try to deny them any chance at that. Carter is slept in the meanwhile, but Dino going down, not a good thing. 20 seconds left to go. They're going to invest the Nata boost here, so they're going to see if they can try to make something out of nothing here, especially with these railgun shots. Not using the overclock just yet, but with 10 seconds left to go, has final fight, ready to go. But oh no, Naderade goes down. That's not what you want, especially in a final fight territory here. You lose your healer as well, and now it's just a peek out game. The overtime clock is going to bleed. The transcendence there just to make sure that they have healing on the card. Doesn't even matter. Delaware, three to one win over this team of Greensboro. Now they're up 2-0 in the series. We got up to all in Greensboro. They had some, you know, rage-filled energy just a few minutes ago, and it's like it just completely dissipated into dust, and it is not looking very good for them at all. We're thinking in the beginning, you know, they probably could have been able to catch up. But at this point, it might be an absolute shutout coming from Delaware. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be, it's not going to look good on the record, especially um, if Greensboro, I mean, both teams two and one, uh, and especially, I mean, Greensboro, that's the Spartans had their loss against Fisher. You wanted to try to see if you can build a momentum right now, not looking great for the Blue Hens. You build momentum off that 3-0 win over SAU uh, and Overwatch 2 team. And so now you've got a 2-0 lead over your opponents of Greensboro. Spartans needing to win this one and for a reverse sweep possibility. But right now, the only broom peeking out of the closet is this uh, team from uh, Delaware who's got a 2-0 lead on them. So next map coming up is going to be Route 66. And right now, uh, longer sight lines, open air. I mean, pharmacy might work here, but the way that Delaware is, pl or the way that Delaware is playing right now, uh, it's it's basically it's it, this is going to be tough for them. That's all I can say. And honestly, Delaware has just been nothing but absolute pure aggression this entire time. Like, if anything, yeah, like from a one to a ten, they've just been cranked up to an absolute fifteen throughout a lot of these matches, especially on Ilios and Paraiso, which was absolute madness. Even on defense, they didn't even give Greensboro a single sliver to breathe, no matter how many times they had their backs pushed up against the wall. It was just dive after dive after dive, W key after W key, pretty much for most of those first couple of minutes, and it was just absolutely insane. <laughs> And so, yeah, ab absolutely insane, especially from Delaware's uh, point of view there. Do have a sub coming in for uh, the Spartans of Greensboro. You're going to have Retro Breeze subbing in for Dino on their side. No other subs to report as of right now. So, uh, And it looks like Greensboro is going to pick the same side. It's going to pick defense. Again, losing side uh, does pick defense. And the uh, the maps are already predetermined as we go along here week four. Uh, so maps are predetermined, in the, at least in the regular season side. So they are going to go to Route 66 no matter what happens. Uh, Dino getting subbed in uh retro breeze will fill in that spot so it'll be a healer for or it'll be supports for support excuse me uh on that end so for right now as it stands uh they're trying to, i guess they're they're going to try to see if maybe route 66 is a different map i mean it might fill in like different teams have different maps right so uh especially on escort right you had uh if you go back to an overwatch league map obviously uh, this last one uh kilo subbing in for uh i believe kilo subs in for striker and kilo is a better on on circuit royale especially when the shot gets that map pick so hey maybe on escort this is that kind of kind of thing as well where they're kind of switching it up a little bit uh for subs wise and for the side of delaware they're going to do the same 
same thing as well as we're getting uh, reports in. Uh, Rice Fizz is going to sub in for Carter at that same point. So it'll be a one sub out on each end. And actually, Carter, the tank, uh, gets subbed out for Rice Fizz as well. So that could be an interesting development as well for them. And honestly, this is looking pretty interesting. I'll admit, though, the moment I heard shock, I'll admit there was nothing but red blood <laughs> seen in my eyes. You are on thin ice with me, man. Thin ice. <laughs> Sorry, had to me- sorry, had to mention it. That had to mention it. I mean, hey, it's playoff season. Playoff season, anything can happen. Anything, anything yeah, can anything, happen. Anything can happen. Yep. Just oh, shock! <laughs> it's it's a love hate relationship. It's Being love- in LA, there is. Mm. Look, yeah. at least, at least, at least here, I'll, I'll put this in perspective. At least we can say uh, we're the only two. Te- uh, we're the two out of the three teams from California that can make uh, the the playoffs. Uh, sorry, Valiant fans, if you're out there. Oh, RIP Valiant. Ooh, if there's one Valiant just fan, he's just somewhere out there. Somewhere. Sad. Somewhere. Just, just, just... somewhere, like San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, well, or maybe even in, in L.A., just in the in some corner of L.A. somewhere. I mean, <laughs> not too sure where you would look, but some some somewhere in that corner. But anyways. Uh... Yeah, just corner. <laughs> just edge corner. Edge of the earth? I'm not too sure. Carbon uh... box, maybe. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Teams look like they're ready to go. Route 66 coming up. Oh, God. Oh, boy. We apologize oh, to any Valiant people that are watching this. We, we, we Sorry, guys. There, there are fans out there. Maybe maybe next year, but as for 2022, no playoff appearances anyway. Yeah. But uh, anyways, one more sub to report of. Actually, uh, it's going to be uh, instead of Retro Breeze, uh, they're going to say Honey One is in for uh, Retro Breeze. So Retro Breeze subs in for Dino, and then Honey One subs in for Retro Breeze. So... It's still a support sub, just a circle of life, if you will. They just rotate out. Uh, but Thank anyways, you. going into the next map, Route 66 coming up. Let's find out what these teams are playing. Defensive side, Greensboro will stay there. Sigma is coming out. But Delaware, if this holds true, first look at the uh, Rice Fist and TBD Man. Or TBD Man, I believe, looking to play support. Okay, no, that was just a joke pick to start. Um, But... <laughs> It look, I mean, TVD Man pulled out the cuticle to start. Didn't know if that was going to hold true or not. But if they have to stay in their roles, then yes, TVD Man would still be on DPS. But uh, Greensboro's on the defensive side going to pull out the Sigma in this case. And first look at the Ash in this case. And obviously on Delaware side, I'm seeing a Jumper Queen pick for Route 66, yep. which is honestly pretty common. But mm, Jumper nope. Queen, oh, jo- oh, never mind as we have Rice <laughs> Fist switching. No! I was baited. so hyped! You, you got baited. You got baited. I mean, they're, they're oh, in the attacker spot. Man. I mean, they can change at any given moment, but they change into the Winston instead. TVD Man on the Reaper. Moonlock instead of the Sojourn, which we've seen the Sojourn pop off so many times this game. Uh, Moonlock now switching on over to the Widowmaker, maybe to try to find a, a different point of view here. Uh, with that Widowmaker long sight, as now I'm just trying to dive right in. Rice Fist falls a little bit short, thanks to the accretion for right now, but is able to dive right back in. Good Bionade that's going to go upstairs, and that's courtesy of Sully. That's just going to find two people inside of that. That forces them back, forces out the immortality field, and now TBD Man can just pop off with the rest of the team. They have to back off of Big Earl's gas station. But they're running out of gas at this point. 3.20 on the clock, and it looks like first fight, and everything about the first cap is going to be theirs. It is like Greensboro cannot catch a break no matter which hero, no matter which map they are on. I am seeing so many switch-ups already, and Delaware is just cool, calm, collected. It's like, you know what? I think we're pretty much fine. we got two minutes left. Sorry, five minutes left as the payload has just hit this next checkpoint, and it is going to be just a rough uphill from here for Greensboro, trying to get this push back. Yeah, they're just trying to find any way in. That's a start. Magic is able to find a shot onto Step, and with no mercies available on Delaware's side, you know that's not going to get rezzed up. Rice Fist is just sitting here, just getting some damage off, just chilling out on the, around the corner, getting the damage with the Winston off. Magic is going to go one for one with Moonlock, and good shot at the Moonlock. Catches them off guard, and the dome is popped off. 4.55 remaining on the clock. Good trades now for Greensboro. This Reaper is still playing for something. Any kind of kill has to back off already. Finds a body shot, but isn't going to find much of anything. Greensboro. Uh, still getting pressure though. I mean, this Winston just providing so much pressure. Magic does have the Infrasight ready to go, and now you have Naderade oh so low. Able to get back up, but Connect Grass finds nothing. No shield is going to be there, and now you've got the Nano Boost invested onto Rice Fist, who gets slapped but woken up. Or I'm sorry, didn't get slapped, excuse me, but was stunned for a little while, is still able to find a way to get in with the Primal Rage. And now the rest of Delaware, despite losing two very early on, is able to fight back, and it's a team kill. 
and might be one more fight before they get to the second point, but not looking likely. Man, that was one angry monkey in the form of Rice Fist and one angry TBD man just getting an absolute <laughs> stool of strikes on Greensboro here. It's like they have just completely oh. smashed the W key. Here we go, Death Blossom as TBD man gets a kill and shit the end mortality field, but not enough as TBD man is taken out. But Steph getting a headshot on attack moves just like that. Golly, that was disgusting. Yeah, Steph just hitting the entire volley on the head of attack moons and that was just nuts uh i mean that's what you get honey one uh having the kitsune rush ready to go shadow wolf and the app matrix at the same time moonluck winning the widowmaker battle against magic so that forces back greensboro even more here especially you don't want to get your dome picked off from that and now the other mirror battle tbd man versus attack moons on the reaper reaper Reap Reap won by delaware yet again over four minutes remaining and this cart i don't think maybe has stopped once or twice for only a couple of seconds but if that's because if they finish this map like they have been doing, they might have a full game here left to play if they get to that second point. Moon Moonluck taking down the dome of Honey One. I mean, this is just insane right now. The way Moonluck has been playing, especially on this Widowmaker back to back. Magic's able to trade that out. So the Widowmaker is really deciding the area of this fight. But Attack Moons get slapped. Good night, Attack Moons, from the hands of both of the support dealers. Widowmaker trade is still there as well. But now you're looking Whoa. for more shot step again. It's huge. Steph has not missed a shot. And now the Transcendence there to hold on. The card does back up just a little bit. But it's just going to keep advancing here. As Rice Fizz is able to find two. Naderate, though, trying to clutch up this fight, especially in a spawn fight area. Drops two. And now that's the backup signal for Delaware. So Greensboro wins a defensive fight. My god, finally Greensboro coming through, and with so many ultimates just up and ready, this is going to look like a next interesting team fight coming up here. And Steph has switched over to Lucio, so we might see a beat drop in just a couple of minutes here, as that ult is at 16%, and Dello are looking to come back in full force. Let's see, Infrasight's used already. They're gonna try to find where they are, but that's behind the shield. Nanaboo's also invested onto Rice Fist, who has some primal range available. Death Blossom out from Attack Boots, slept! Good night, Ooh. Attack Boots, yet again! Can't find anything. Shadow Wolf does find TVD now, but it's not gonna matter when the rest of the team starts to fall. The Gritted Flux there, just for desperation to hold on. One person on cart. They do have the kill on to Naderade. Thank you very much to Moonluck for sweeping that up. The Halo coming into the final 10 meters of play here. It is contested, though, so we will see if this Kiriko and this Reaper can hold on. Rice Fizz causing so much havoc, though. This Reaper uses Wraith. No more Wraith for Attack Moves yet again, who just cannot play the game. Less than five meters remaining. Somebody's got a touch. Half a meter to go. Diva gets out of mech just a touch, and that Diva will go down. The Kitsune Rush out of desperation will do absolute zero. They do have the protection Susu out just to hold on for the long, as long as possible in the stun. The EMP out for Magic is gonna do nada. The Death Blossom secures it two and a half yet again. And Delaware on Route 66 finds all three. Uno dos, adios, finding the entire map of Route 66. God, that EMP was nothing more than a mosquito bite as everybody just completely fought out of that. It's like, wait, do y'all feel that? No? Well, anyways, time to push this payload. Well, GG's, that is just it. There's just so much going on. Greensboro hasn't even gotten a chance. Of course, they've gotten a few on the defense. Just won that one defensive fight, but at what cost? At what cost, man? Assist. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. at what cost? I mean, Greensboro needed needed to stall. I mean, hey, it wasn't a bad stall either. They were they had that payload, I think, within the last 25 meters for about four minutes, and then uh, Magic's popping off for a little while there, and Nidorita as well, to forcing them to back. So hey, if you're gonna credit anybody with the, uh, the less lesser of a time bank there, Magic's and Nidorita uh, showing them off. Attack moves just couldn't play the game. I mean, got slept so many times. Uh, the Death Blossom got slept to find absolutely nothing. So now you're gonna see if. You don't need to dive right into the team this time around. And the Tech Moons is going to play a little bit safer, plays the longer sight lines on the Soldier. And now Delaware brings up the Reinhardt, which, I mean, you're up 2 nothing. Anything works, right? And if you can be aggressive, hey, the Reinhardt's not a bad pick. I mean, honestly, I mean, you are, hmm, I'm trying to think. Is Reinhardt on Route 66? I mean, you have some room for maneuverability. Hey, it's not but at common. the same time, ugh, yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. It's You're right, it's not common. But it could work. It might oh, look where work. they are. Look where they are. Look where they uh -oh. are. They're inside of the train right there. They're inside of this uh -oh. train right now. Rice Fizz is slept for a little while. 
The Ana able to get back in, but look where they're holding them. They're holding them right in the spawn door. They are saying, no, you are not getting out anytime soon. Fortunately, though, with the Sombra taking down Rice Biz and their shield, thanks to the hack, the Tack Moon's able to fall, swoop right in and take that pick. Meanwhile, still a 4v4 situation, but the spawn run still in favor of this team of Greensboro. That's going to allow them to take care of Sully. That's a backup situation now, as you have basically no heals to get you out of there except for Akitiko. But right now, 321, that was a scary situation, but Greensboro able to move on. And honestly, that Reinhardt just got murdered absolutely right out of the gate. Rice Fizz was barely even able to breathe when coming out of there. And it looks like Greensboro might be able to get a couple of kills, but ooh, that shield is coming out from Rice Fizz. Plenty of health left on there, but it's getting torn down pretty immediately. And Soli with a headshot on Magic. That is just absolutely deadly. Forget calling that Zenyatta. That is Widow Yada at this point. As the Reinhardt, here we go with the dive. And it is getting intense. Moonluck taking out the mortality field. And Soli with another kill on Shadow Wolf. Steph going up through Tack Moon. And TBD, man, a double kill on both Raid and Honey. And that's big for them. I mean, now you look at the ultimate percentages built up here. Greensboro yet to build up that EMP. I mean, Honey One's going to have a nano boost and Shadow Wolf and that amp matrix. Maybe a tactical visor at the same time. Oh boy, they're surrounding TBD Man entirely here. TBD Man can't get out. The Death Blossom, though. Oh no, Attack Boots gets caught up inside of it. Magic Sisters. Bye bye. Now the Earth Shatter gets a kill on the Shadow Wolf. They're going to try to eliminate one off the map, which they do. Honey One is charged right off the map thanks to the charge cancellation. And it's another fight, quick fight win on the hands of TD Man with the Death Blossom and the Rice Viz on the Earth Shatter, but two minutes gone, two minutes left. Greensboro needs to find something here, and they have a lot of ultimates to work with. I cannot believe I am saying this, but I think Reinhardt might be a little useful in Route 66 here. Well, it has just been dive. I mean, yeah. just a bit. Just, just a bit. Just a little I mean, bit. if you're in Delaware, but it's actually working yeah. out. It is working out. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not common of a pick, but when it works, it works, right? Uh, Bionate is out, TBD Man goes down with the Hazmat, so now Greensboro in a better situation. Charge is canceled out thanks to the hack for right now, and now the App Matrix just to save base a little bit. And Greensboro, look, they're winning the fight with only needing to use one ult. Hey, that's not bad for you. You're able to get it around the corner for right now, and so it's a backup situation here for Delaware. Bryce Smith switching on over from the Reinhardt into the Winston now. The Attack Fighter canceled. Not a nothing out of it. Attack Moons goes down yet again. I don't think Attack, I think Attack Moons may have have found only one kill this entire game with an ultimate, or rather this entire round with an ultimate, but now the Diva's showing off. Naderade's going to be able to help out their team, and this is an advancement forward here for Greensboro if they want to push on this, especially in a 5v3 situation with a minute left. And honestly, Delaware switching over to Junker Queen, which is honestly not a bad pick at all. But again, Route 66, you're going to do some damage, Moonluck, with a kill on Shadow Wolf. Greensboro has just lost their healer, and it is not going to be the best if they can't get those heals off the bat immediately. I mean, Ana can do a lot, but can only do so much in this situation. And here comes a hack with Magic's and a kill on TBD, man, and Rice Fizz with a kill on Attack Moons. Oh, that's big for them. I mean, they have the Junker Queen. I mean, Rice Fist is basically, uh, I mean, they've been playing, what, Mystery Heroes for now, for right now. I mean, it's still working, mind you. They've got, they've switched, or they went from a Reinhardt to a Winston, switching to a Junker Queen now. I mean, it's three, three tanks here in the matter of four minutes. Uh, but three ultimates coming up for Greensboro. Let's see how they use it. Delaware does have the Transcendence ready to go to help themselves out, but Greensboro has that Bionate from Honey One, especially with the EMP at the same time. Transcendence is out, used perfectly to counter that. Now the self-destruct out right on top of the gas station finds nothing. Death Blossom though from TBD Man. Good night, three people. That's two of the DPSs and one Baptiste. It is the night time and Greensboro is just gonna get put to sleep. Delaware brings the broom out of the closet, and the sweep is good. Delaware wins 3 to nothing over Greensboro, and their record moves on to 3-1. and one. My god, good night indeed, Greensboro. Matter of fact, let me get the nightcap and the slippers, and the nightquil, extra strength, because that was absolutely deadly from Delaware. And of course, all hail the King Rice Fizz, as they just get the Reinhardt play of the game. And I'll tell you one thing, it wasn't a common pick, but it was a beautiful pick, and I was absolutely here for every minute of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, an insane pick there. Uh, from the Reinhardt, we didn't think uh, we it, we thought again back here. If you weren't listening earlier, it wasn't a common pick. 
It wasn't a common pick at all to see a Reinhardt on Route 66, and yet it worked. I mean, yeah, you switched to uh, a Winston afterwards, followed by a Junker Queen. But hey, the Reinhardt was working for you, uh, unless the uh, hat comes in from the Sombra. But otherwise, that Reinhardt was just absolutely popping off. And uh, Delaware able to get uh, a 3 nothing sweep. So good game from Delaware. Greensboro falling out down to a 2-2 two and two record. Uh, so not a, they have destiny in their hands. It's just what they do with it the rest of the way. Got to get uh, two more wins to get a good record at the end, especially a winning record is what you want uh, going into the latter part of the season. But Delaware three and one uh, secures themselves at the very worst a 500 record. So in the regular season, so hey, not bad. Uh, Delaware's got two more games to play. So does Greensboro after that. But folks, we will take a short break. We'll see if we can get an interview from one of our guys uh, on the winning team of Delaware. So we'll take a short break. We'll see if we can get that right on the other side. Talk about burnout when it comes to playing and you play every day. What do you do to kind of get yourself back into the zone or what do you do when you're experiencing burnout? It kind of goes back to like watching content creators, like the people mm -hmm. I watch on YouTube. I, do, I will, I'll like, I'll see if they post anything new or I'll just watch whatever they have and I'll get inspired to do it and I'll just be like, all right, well, time to hop on. Even if I don't not feeling it i'll try to try to do something would you say that there's anyone on your team that really stands out to you or kind of motivates you to play yes one kid on our team's name's alex he is diamond two diamond one or diamond two in Valorant. so he, he's up there he only really plays with us he plays on his own but he plays with us during games and sometimes afterwards trying to be at his level i think would be very the goal so he kind of it, it kind of like inspires you to kind of like keep going anyone really mm -hmm. anyone really that's higher ranked than you kind of inspires you to like all right you 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 want to you want to push yourself to be where they are and that's right. kind of what i've been doing recently there are there are people like that for you since this is your first time being on a collegiate team do you have any advice to people who may be looking to join a team or aren't sure if they should or not I say just go for it. When I saw the poster in the school, I was like, maybe they have like, you know, Valorant team, whatever. At the time, I was, I kind of doubted my ability, right? I kind of doubted my ability because like I was a low rank. I know I could hold my own in the game, but I didn't know how I would like compare. But I think you just have to go for it because if you don't, how would you know if you don't go for it? Would you say that the people on your team helped you out? Yeah, for sure. I think people who are higher ranked than you are like, they they teach you. you you obviously learn on your own but there's a lot of things that you can get that you, you can get taught from your teammates and just how they how they play well thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me i really appreciate it i can't say that i'll get in trouble there's one for each game so teams this weekend somebody's gonna have to explain to tsa why they're coming home with an extra trophy fine. we're fine this is gonna be great why is everybody staring at me i'm not even doing anything yet is it because i'm in a suit it looks nice it's new i'm stressing i'm stressing it's all right we win these we absolutely win these i've never seen us lose these i love him i think i don't remember his name what is going on everybody and oh are we ready i'll start over okay What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my god, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're going to interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's going to rain, and this suit is new, so. Oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and, like, writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's going to be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name, though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. You're Jen? All right, we're going to interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. I'm going to ask you like, a couple of very simple questions. Okay. Um, are we ready? All right, great. College. I really like Georgia College's uh, color scheme. It's just red, white, and blue, I think, but I think they did it in a really clever way. Mineral area wearing hoodies, even though it is 75 degrees outside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Absolute legends. If only Nick could hear you. Nick, come back. If he's over 100 feet away, he can't. And you were whispering something, and he started smiling. I'm like, are you whispering? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's got his headphone in if we're close enough. But... Bless you. Because in tight. Because in tight again. You're welcome. I'm going to go find him. Oh, oh, there he is! Can you hear me? 
<laughs> oh my. Oh, okay, okay. Real, real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm really. I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. Thirty is already. Okay. You. Wow, it's not ten thirty yet. It's only like <laughs> barely ten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long. Hey, what's up? Surprise interview. Join me over here. This we have a cool backdrop. What are we here for? Rocket League. Awesome. I'm not gonna ask what school you go to because unless you swap hoodies, that seems pretty clear. No, nope. you know I got I got my jersey on with my name on it. Oh, you do. We show us your jersey. Look at John T. Turbo here. Yeah, exactly. That's not his name. I just keep calling him that. Yeah. His name is John, but it, my it, name is John Turbesi. Yeah, that's not John T. Turbo. Yeah, I get the message that I'm going to Nebraska where I met you. Oh, <laughs> that's so crazy. So context, if we're probably never gonna use. This, but I want to talk about it. Turbo and I met at a LAN like over a year ago. That's so Not great. Over. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. I am Septimus, joined by a man I have interviewed probably well over 10 times. It's going to be my good friend Neb here from Bay State Overwatch team. Neb looked at me and before he started his last series and he said, We are not dropping a map for the rest of the day. And so far, he has lived up to that title. But Neb, is there anybody you're thinking, We've got to get them out of the way? We've got to take them down. Uh, no. No? Just looking at it, each fight's its own, every game going into it, just taking it as it comes? Uh, I have the confidence right now that we're not going to drop a single map. I, I love Neb because he not only is he confident, but he's correct. Bay State is one of the best Overwatch teams I've ever seen. So it's it's always good to hear from I love the confidence, and I love Bay State, so I hope they do a great job this weekend. So what qualifier? Did you win a qualifier to get here? At large bid. We're looking at Rocket League. We're thinking high odds, low odds. What do, where do we think we're walking away? I think I think pretty high. I think we're, we're doing pretty good. Is there anybody that you're looking at, you're like, please do not let us go up against them unless we absolutely have to? I mean, really, everybody's good competition. So. And sorry, what was your name? Ethan. Ethan, Ethan from Mineral Area. Yep. Very exciting. Well, Ethan, good luck. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Please. What kind of pass? A player pass? Let me get you on your No, you actually have to like tape it to your chest, like really awkwardly with masking tape. Okay. And it's going to fall off. Welcome back, everybody, inside of the booth here. Clutch Key, Clutch Key alongside Asherbach here. And uh, we got uh, an interview coming up from the winning team of uh, Delaware. like to welcome into the booth here Carter, uh, who's from the uh, Delaware team. And we saw him on Tank earlier as that Zarya playing on both Elios and Paraiso. So, Carter, uh, what is that uh, win? Welcome into the booth first off. And uh, that win's got to feel good for you guys now. Two straight games of a 3-0. and uh, First game uh, was Stockton last week. Now you got a 3-0 against, um, against UNC Green. Got to feel good to be uh, two straight games and three and O's. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having us. Thanks for casting. It was great. Uh, yeah, it, it felt amazing. I got to say, um, we were very comfortable in the Zarya comps, as you could probably tell. That's kind of my comfort pick. And um, that's what we've been practicing. And it, it showed tonight. Uh, I think we did pretty well. All right. And honestly, I got to ask, what was your guys' strategy going into Route 66 with that? Right? I just got to know. That was absolutely oh, wild, man. So we subbed in uh, Rice Fizz. He he tends to get a little creative at times, but uh, trust me, that man has the brain of like a giant. He's crazy. He's got some creative strategies, so we were really putting him to the test. So we had, I think they had some fun running them. All right, and next question. Like, man, honestly, it's so hard asking questions because the interviews, it's like that was such an exciting game, first of all. Yeah. And I'm still frizzled a little bit by those couple of picks. And what was going through your mind when it came to, what was it, Paraiso, that Zarya pick? Man, I got to ask, like, what was the strategy for Paraiso as well? So um, one of the things I've been practicing on my own is uh, the Zarya rollouts with the uh, right clicks. So I made, I made it very clear to my team um, that I would be doing a rocket jump onto, onto the car, onto the truck, onto the high ground. And um, I think it worked out pretty well. We were able to take high ground from there. Um, the Zarya right click buff is really uh, like an underrated ability. It's it's so good. So I was just putting that to use and uh, it worked out. Yeah, it worked out indeed for you guys. And I mean, what a showcase uh, from you guys. Again, a 3-0 sweep uh, over Greensboro. And we thank you for your time. Uh, last question here for you. Uh, going Moving forward now, you guys are 3-1, and one, like I was saying. Uh, two straight games on a 3-0 and oh start. Uh, going uh, Winning last week against Stockton. Now to Greensboro, two more opponents left to play here in the regular season before it's time for playoffs uh, here at uh, for the ECAC side. So for you guys, uh, what's the mentality going forward, especially knowing that uh, soon enough in about uh, 13 days from now, I mean, we're going to see a different patch, right? So two, so the next two weeks you're going to still be playing that Zarya obviously uh, up to full capacity until it gets switched off but uh, for those two weeks I mean what's the mentality going to go uh, be going forward until that patch 
So right now we're pretty much watching Overwatch League like a hawk. Um, it's pretty clear what the meta is. If you've seen the pick rates uh, for those games, it is like a hard uh, Winston meta. So we could, we're definitely going to have Rice Fizz. Um, or he's, he plays most of the main tanks for us. We're going to have him on Winston. I'm going to probably finish out these last 13 days or however many are left on Zarya. But um, we're definitely uh, looking at Overwatch League as our like, little mentor to see where we need to go next. No, 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 no chance at no chance at Carter playing uh, Carter playing that Winston or uh, oh, playing any of the other characters. I mean, we I mean we see a so we've seen Soldier and Reaper. I mean, we we've seen all of that, right? Soldier and Reaper, uh, Kitako, uh, Lucio as well. I mean, there's there's a chance one of those characters could be in your oh sure in, oh in, sure in, in your pool. Yeah, sure. I I dabble in you know little Doomfist, little Junker Queen. Oh, there you go. Um, we have like a Reaper one trick. He's probably just gonna play Reaper because he's good. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll dabble in a little little other stuff here and there. But I think Winston's gonna be like a, a really strong pick going into the next uh, meta. Yeah, as it has been in Overwatch League and has been uh, and will probably going uh, be going forward, especially in the high level collegiate Overwatch side. So again, congratulations to you. And you said you have a shout out to do before we end here. Oh yes, first of all, big shout out to you guys, the casters. I think you guys are doing a wonderful job. I think this production is very. Very polished. I love it. And uh, also, a big shout out to TVD Man, our DPS. His dad, uh, his dad has been supporting us from the sidelines, and uh, it's a, he's a great motivator for us. So thank you, TVD's dad. And thank you to you as well for joining us, uh, Carter. Uh, best of luck to you and the team the rest of the way. Thank you. See ya. All right. Thank you very much. That was Carter uh, with us inside of the booth. And hey, uh, Delaware off to a good start to uh, three and one here. Like I said, two weeks left to go in the regular season. And that's kind of where you want to be. If you're not four and oh, three and one ain't that much worse. Yeah, honestly, that was just an absolutely insane couple of games. And a shout out to TVD, man, especially so many Death Blossoms coming in clutch. So many of those rounds might have been what saved Delaware a couple of few times. Give me greens, bro. An absolute hell to do with each and every time. Yeah, and each and every time for Delaware was a good win for them. 2-0 on Elios, 3-1 on Paraiso, 3-0 on Route 66. Delaware was big each time, and Delaware gets the broom for this matchup. That'll do it for our side coming up next. It'll be the Rocket League uh, teams coming up of Mount St. Mary's University versus Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. So RPI versus Mount St. Mary's coming up next. This has been Overwatch 2, the ECAC regular season week four coming up next. Rocket League on the other side. I'm great. Everything's good. Who do we interview? Who should we interview? I don't know. I'm just here. I need caffeine. Hey guys, KTAD here. Now, I've been told I need to step in to create like a buffer zone between some of the other hosts so that uh, the Valorant v Overwatch conflict may finally come to an end. But uh, between, uh, between you and me guys, I don't think they both realize that League's kind of already won that war. So, uh, so don't tell them. Don't tell them anything. But anyways... You guys already know why we're here, and if not, well, then you're in luck because we've got some of the best collegiate esports moments right here. Don't believe me? Well, that's okay, but, uh, you know, here's your proof. Let's get into it. To start us off, we have the combo of Matt and Festive as they execute a brilliant mid-air handoff to close out game two and tie up the series. Here in regulation, can Festive and Matt do it? Matt's there, puts it in, and we do get the go-ahead goal. Is it going to be enough to end it here in reg? 25 seconds left right here. About two minutes since our last goal. Fifth total in this one. Is this looking like a yeah, moderately... Feeling thirsty? Well, if you are, then Krolo's got what you need with these sick plays on Pac-Man. Not. Always guaranteed the stock goes for the side special into that. That would have been an insane way to end it. And now Prolo looking for oh! the fire like an edge guard. Slam dunk right there. Is they're able to finish them off, David? At number six, see if you can count the ultimates here because when the dust settles, there can be only one survivor. I don't know what Kid University are thinking. Well, okay, they're thinking it. What is going on in this fight? My days! Two to the bomb, three to the tire, one to the self destruct, and it's we just get the team. It's a, it's a lone What baby is diva. happening? <laughs> no, okay. Hugo's back there. 
You know what number play this is, right? Because J-Rod knows. And let me tell you, he's definitely keeping count. But it's gonna be J-Rod who strikes first again with a nice headshot onto Boss. Gonna start oh moving God. down into Garage, and J-Rod has just approached now through Garage. Fire Ball has been committed. Oh Lance oh. tries to take a peek, but J-Rod's there, finds Pigeon Mac. We're looking at potentially an ace. Austin gonna do their- Trying to scrape together some sort of consolation prize. He's blinded, and they're- Oh my God, draw. What a teammate. He's giving a- Oh no, J-Rod around the corner looking for the ace. One shot on Austin, he finds the oh. ace. Good guy, Beautiful. draw, gives it over. Love the- A man down, the overtime clock counting, and the ball on their half of the pitch. Yet somehow, Stonehill manages to make it work in this crazy match against Buena Vista. Out and push right back out again. This is a game of inches. Who can aggress first? And that's gonna be it. Joker from the long shot along the field. Look at this from the back of board. Straight to Joker's feet. The touch is so delicate. In what was surely a game-changing play here, Nichols State's Law pulls out a tire that can only be described as illegal to put the nail in the coffin against Missouri Western. Ready. On the bright side, yeah, Nichols has enough time to come through. No! It's three! No! Three. It's not one, it's not two, it's not three. It is three eliminations with Law's rim tire there. Absolutely incredible. Able to pick up a fourth. Look at the shy the team go right now. At number two, it's just a masterful display of edge guarding from Adelphi's Davian. Check it out. That roller is going to be a great opportunity to get in and pass, possibly even just through those arms. Goes for the down throw into forward, or forward air, excuse me, a great combo. Gonna find some great damage offside, and as that paint just racks up onto this mid -min, that is more and more damage basically for free. Davion, bottom stage. My goodness, what a stall! Beautiful edge guard, and England. And in our top play of this week, have you seen the movie Ratatouille? It has nothing to do with this play, but I think you'll see why we bring it up. Look at this rat, though. Look at this rat going up long, dude. Oh, he's got another. I mean, it's Ratatouille. They're chefing it up. I'm gonna go find another. <laughs> Fozzie, quick trade, though. And they'll stall the push for now, but contain just a little bit here. We got a lot more work to be done. It's out of CT already. Right click is missed! Ooh. Yeah, right click is huge going in this round. It's not gonna find anything but tumble. Oh, will follow you with a quick trade. Oh, and okay. stop. Okay, stop let the it. rat do it all. Oh, my. Phew. What a week and what a crazy set of matches we've been seeing so far. Now, with that said, we're just now passing the halfway point in the season. So that playoffs picture is definitely starting to shape up. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the ECAC action, then definitely give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. Or if you guys want to catch all of the matches live, you can find us on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7. Now, as always, a special shout out to our partners over at Esports U for expanding on our broadcast coverage. We definitely want to give them a special thank you for that. But you know, that's it. That's the show. That's all we've got this week. Come back next week. Hopefully we've got a new host. Hopefully they've stopped bickering and all of that. But in any case, I've been KTAD. It's been a blast and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, what's up? It's Honix back at it again to bring you the sickest clips from ECAC. But listen guys, here's the thing. Overwatch 2 still isn't out. And it's been so long that I understand what's happening in the Valorant clips now. I just, I don't know how I could have let this happen. Anyways, let's check out the action from week two of ECAC. First up, we've got Nico Baca, who's got a need for speed. 
Jacob, but they have to be careful here. That kick I'm not quite in their favor. Patrick has to be quick to him, and Nico back. He's just soaring through his sky with way too much pace. Yeah, you knew this was coming. When this one lingered up in the air for a bit too long from Janiel's touch, Patrick tried to go up for this one, but Nico, like we said, he's been the fastest player in this lobby. The just a friendly reminder that fireworks always add pizzazz to your points. Of this series. Good read there by Jock. Because mm. if he didn't place down that block, that would have been a really early stock lead that he would have gotten. And oh, oh! Wow, Absolutely sniped out of midair. What a Everyone is in flux when Mount St. Mary's is on the point. And that is the bulk of your healing if you're Emery and Henry. Now you're coming in with both the Vessels and the Shatter, but again, a massive gravity flux comes out from Mount St. Mary, stops them in their tracks before they can even get started. Yeah, the tech vibes are gonna deal the final blows to several members of Emery and Henry. Eve has got beef with BSU and wants everyone to know it. Be one situation left to clutch it out. Oh, no. I'm a little bit afraid here that the wide swing's <laughs> gonna come out, but Ian's waiting. Ian is being a little bit patient here. He is not going to be able to get the first one, and maybe, maybe if Ian was able to wait there a little bit longer, he would not have been able to get that free. Someone, not me, is going to have to tell Taylor Halo that sharing isn't always caring. Gonna beat it. Get right out, Halo. Don't let your guard down. You never know when Rhino will come charging in. Rhino is all the way back. That just goes to show how much they're not wanting to make it, but Rhino with all the control gets the one on the board. <sighs> Talk about getting one in there. He actually like picks it up initially from like a mini pass to himself that you know an expert is expecting an expert to do something expertly, right? That is just about <laughs> as simple as it gets, right? Like 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 just just literally boiling it down to more basic rocket league right there. Uh, oh my god, and again, Rhino does it twice in about 30 seconds after no scores. We're bringing it around town with Chowin University. Big fights out short town though. Just gets the better of it. Great spray control. Takes two down with him. And already Chowan is looking at a 2-0 right now. Gonna try an entry onto the site with quickness. Not willing to take his foot off the pedal. And town has got a third. The last two coming from CT. And Town wants to put the nail in the coffin right here, right now. One there, he's gonna hear them both. Get the head in front of him. Four before he goes down. And all it takes is just to finish this one off. Last but certainly not least, Big J5 coming in hot with a big 5K. And Kentucky, they may get the second point for free. Ooh, oh, that shot headshot. Big J. The oh, another headshot. one. What? He's got and another dragon already. The third. Wait, he a finds third. three. Big J, he's looking for a fourth. Oh, my God, he finds it. He is single-handedly destroying Kentucky right now. Oh, my goodness. Four eliminations, one Hanzo, and a brand new Dragons Online. The question. Wow, I missed these awesome clips and it's only week two, so make sure to keep up with the action on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports, Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 and Wednesdays at 7. And make sure to follow their Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. And thank you to our partner Esports U and to you for hanging out with me today. See you next time. Hi everyone, my name is Heather Garozo, also known as Sapphire. I'm so excited to join you here today. This is an initiative that means a lot to me. Um, I've been involved in esports now for a little more than I want to admit, but about 20 years um, in, in many different facets. Um, and when I started, I was often the only woman in the room. Um, 
there were no women competitions. Um, there were no other women on co-ed teams or women's teams. And that obviously has changed drastically over the most recent couple of years. Uh, initiatives like this are, are so meaningful to getting more women involved and giving them a stepping stone to join those tier one leagues, to join co-ed teams, mixed teams, um, and hopefully become the best in the world. So I came to join today to just tell you a little bit about my journey, hopefully inspire you, um, whether you want to go down the path of being a professional gamer or a content creator, or you want to work in the industry. There's so many different options. And I wanted to share a little bit about my story with you. Um, so first off, I'm actually at um, Valorant Champions in Istanbul right now. The match is happening like just behind the door from me. So you might even hear <laughs> some of the crowd noise going hype. The crowd is obviously cheering for Fnatic. Actually, I just heard a loud cheer right now. So something epic might have just happened. But uh, so apologies if you hear that background noise, but it's all part of the vibe. It's all part of just being in esports, living and breathing esports. Um, my journey actually started just as a player. Um, I was a multi-sport varsity athlete in high school, um, tore my MCL, was out, out on an injury. Um, and then I found esports. My brother would have his friends over and I didn't want my brother to be better than me than anything. And I just started playing. And this was actually Counter-Strike. Valorant wasn't out at the time, of course. Um, and turns out that I was pretty decent at it. And so I started playing more and more. Hi everyone, tonight we are coming uh, to you playing Rocket League. Tonight, um, Mount St. Mary will face off against RPI. My name is Aislinn, you can call me Ace, and then I am also joined by... I'm um, Cyclone. Um, so this is the ECAC Rocket League um, League, <laughs> and it, this is week six out of eight, so we are um, nearing the end of the season. So it'll be really interesting to see how these teams are going to be more aggressive as the season ends, as they want to finish it out strong. I agree. Hopefully we'll see some good games tonight. Oh, we better. If I don't see at least three cars getting blown up, then it's not a good <laughs> game. I... I want to see the demolition. I want to see the violence. It's car soccer. You have to have some fun. Yeah. So these two schools are, um, once I said again, as I said before, oh my gosh, Mount St. Mary and RPI, Ooh. and we're going to go right into the game. Oh my gosh, just starting it off with the beautiful aerials right there. King Julian is going to have control of the ball, but he is going to be forced to back off just a little bit. Looks like Fuzzy might go in, but he does get it taken away by Brother Nature. Uh, it looks like King Julian and... The other guy, uh, they are just trying to set up good shots. Ooh. I feel like if their angles were a little bit better, that would have come straight in. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're just trying to boom it back and forth downfield. Playing off of the ceiling a lot, we've seen. Ooh. Beautiful. Oh. oh. Okay, that was a good save on their end. A beautiful shot, though, coming in from Brother Nature. Oh, for sure. Now, King Julian is going to get the first goal of the season, or of this game, sorry. <laughs> and they're just going to continue. Man. Wow. That goal was clear. Uh, I think that they definitely need to bring up their... Um, defense. Defense, just a little bit. Not sure what Geo did just there, but I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> Now we have seen a lot of aggression coming in from King Julian um, uh, from Mount St. Mary. I think he's definitely the player that we're going to be looking for. He definitely has more of a um, stronger play style than what we see. For sure. Uh, ooh, my gosh. 
Uno Waffle uh, is just gonna boost in there and Mattify is gonna get wow. the first goal for RPI. You see how Uno uh, Waffle just hits it off of the ceiling. Oh. Brother Nature just unable to save it. Or, sorry, <laughs> that was not Brother Nature. Now a 50 going on and it looks like um, RPI goes oh. gets the, whoa, go ahead. All right, that's one. That's one. <laughs> we got to keep count. You know what? I'm up in at the five. Okay, I'm down for that. <laughs> uh, looks like yeah, right now it's on the orange side. Uh, sorry, I haven't, I haven't done this in a while. Got to get back into it. <laughs> You're good. RPI doing a lot of offensive rotations here. Oh, and MSMU doing a great job of keeping it at their goal. Looks like King Julian is back to his uh, strong offense right there. Gio is going to go ahead and knock it out of there, but it goes into this corner. Now, this corner is great for generating passes to uh, your teammates. And that's exactly what we see happen there at Brother Nature, but he gets the ball taken away from him. Now, Mattify is going to sit back and goal just a little bit to make sure that they have this defense ready whenever needed. It uh, looks like we got King Julian just sitting there in goal, getting ready to save it in case it goes in. Oh. And then Uno Waffle is the real goalie right there. Uno Waffle's also going to play a more um, offensive position as well, just able to switch through those. King Julian doing a great boom downfield, but Geo Ooh. is going to be there. I couldn't tell who that was, but they did, a, <laughs> they did a beautiful launch back over to the orange side. And straight in the goal by King Julian. So far with these games, we've seen that neither team is able to really hold on to the ball for really long. It's just this constant back and forth motion. Ooh. And we'll see once again, as soon as this ball resets, they're going to go straight into it once again. There's really no time to stop and think whenever it comes to Rocket League. It's just you have to stay on your toes, ready to commit whenever needed, whenever ready to fall back. Exactly. You, you just gotta be prepared for anything, really. Uh, and I, I found that Rocket League, you really gotta get those callouts down right, or else you'll all be bumping into each other. Oh yeah, communication is such a huge thing. Now Uno Waffle is gonna try to get it out of their goal just a little bit. Fuzzy is gonna be there to pick up the slack, but I think Geo was able to get to it first. Uh, it looks like Fuzzy is just doing all he can to keep it over to orange side. And I say that as it goes over to blue side. Another demolition coming in now. Now Geo sees this open position and takes it to his advantage, but he is gonna get it. Oh wow, that's a lot of <laughs> demolitions. Uh, yeah, now it's 10. <laughs> now Geo is just gonna try to take hold of this ball as long as he can. One minute remaining left on the clock and Mount is gonna have the lead here. Oh, Mattify, Ooh. able to bring it as just as I said that, though. <laughs> you jinxed it. I did. So now, uh, it looks like if, okay, I got, either team could try to get a goal, that way they can not be tied, or they might just try to run timeout and then go into overtime. Mm -hmm. This is a best of seven series. I forgot to mention that earlier, so we will see a lot of action. Now, Brother Nature is going to have a great control over that ball there, but wow. it is going to slip through his hand due to Fuzzy just coming in and playing more aggressively. With Geo, I can tell he has definitely more of a passive play style. Um, I'm sure he's playing third man right now instead of um, just deciding to push up. Just as I say that, though, he does get into the action. <laughs> 30 seconds left on the clock, and we are tied right now 2-2. Two to two. Uno Waffle is going to bounce it off the wall just a little bit and follow it. King Julian will be there to get it out. See, what thing, one thing we've seen consistently is this boost control. They're constantly collecting this pads because since this is such a fast-paced game and since both defenses um, sides are extremely strong right now, they just want to have they just want to have the energy and the boost to be able to get downfield as quickly as possible. They don't want to run out in times like this, especially since there isn't much time remaining on the clock. And now you know that you say that, we are now in the <laughs> overtime. So now game ends as soon as one of the teams score, and that could go. 
the most I've seen is like 10 minutes. Mm. Oh, let's see if we are actually able to do that. Uno Waffle Ooh. having great control over the ball right there, getting that flip reset in. Fuzzy is going to bound it off just a little bit, protect his goal for a little bit longer. Going to bounce back. Ooh. Oh, Man. very Oops. close. Yeah, it hit straight to the goal, but didn't go in. Now Fuzzy switches it off to King Julian. Gonna try to get it away from their goal just as much as they can because they're getting in a really uncomfortable situation. Whoa! Falling right off of that backboard right there. Now it's looking a lot better for MS MU. Wow, that is a tongue twister. Geo is gonna be out of boost right now. That may come back to haunt him here coming up. Uh it's like Brother Nature is about to launch it back over to the blue side. The Mattify is just gonna try to move in now, try to help support Geo as much as he can, because you don't want to have only one person on this ball right now, especially since you're so close to that goal. Brother Nature is going to jump up, get it just a little bit, a 50 in mid-air. It looks like Uno Waffle was just doing his best to get it over to orange side. Geo just missing it right there. Just goes right above his head. Now Fuzzy is going to try to keep control on the ball as long as he can, but it is going to get taken away from him fairly quickly. As I said before, neither team is just able to keep their hand on the ball for more than <laughs> barely any time, honestly. Both of these defenses are extremely strong, and the offenses as well, as we see right there. Those two players double committing just to make sure that this goal is safe. Two minutes into overtime, and we see another demolition. That's two demolitions back-to-back. -back. Oh, make that three. Mattify getting it up in the air a bit. Brother Nature and Geo, their boost was looking low there for a second, but Brother Nature is able to get it up. Now King Julian is in the same position. Wow, demolition after demolition going on right now. They're just trying to get these numbers low, especially whenever they get closer to these goals. You don't want to have two players defending this goal at all time because it's just going to make it harder for you to score. Exactly. Uh... All right. On my end, I keep hitting lag spikes. You're good. Mattify passing the ball to Brother Nature right now. He's just going to rotate in the air. Some great aerial, some great control under, over that ball. But he's just going to barely miss that goal right there. Geo once again having zero boost. Booming it downfield once again. This back and forth motion. We haven't seen them stick to a lot of corners yet either. King Julian deciding to fall back instead of doing that more aggressive play style that we've seen. Fuzzy though, able to get it into the air, bouncing it off the wall just a little bit. Oh, Brother Nature, having a great control of that ball right there, but MSMU is just gonna be able to get it out of his hands. Geo gonna jump up and get it from going downfield any more than it already has. King Julian doing the same now. Just making sure that they're not um, too uncomfortable with where the ball is, how close it is to their goal. You know, Waffle just going in, booming it downfield once again. Brother Nature just keeping the ball on top of his car. That's a lot of control right there. It's really impressive to see, honestly, especially whenever you have time to do that in these um, situations where you're constantly going back and forth with the ball. Joe yeah. hitting it out just a little bit, but it isn't going to go too far to RPIs the way he wanted to. Brother Nature wanting to stick with the control of this ball. Mattify is going to be there to back him up right now. 
Brother Nature is going to fall back, and Geo is going to take his place instead. They're just switching off of these positions. Mattify is just going to chase this ball, try to get an idea of where it is going to go. And we're going to switch on to Brother Nature again as the ball goes down towards MSMU side. Geo going to try to get it, and he scores. Ooh. Oh, we, that's five minutes and 33 seconds of overtime. That was a lot. Um, Oof. These, well, uh, these teams are have a great defensive hold, I will say. For sure. Uh, definitely a lot of defense, a lot of good offense mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then we saw, what, three demolitions? It was a lot. <laughs> Yeah, there was three demolitions coming from Mattify, five coming from King Julian. He was on fire, and that is just in one game so far. I'm sure that these numbers are going to be extremely high. Um, we're definitely getting what we hoped for. <laughs> I'm expecting it. If I see anything less, uh, I will be disappointed. I hope they know that. <laughs> now, we do see that um, King Julian is definitely this more aggressive play style, while Fuzzy and Uno Waffle like to just stay back just a little bit. Um, now we're just going to take a look at the scoreboard and just, you know, see how it really is. See how um, these teams play. Since I haven't seen these teams play before, it'll definitely allow me to get an idea of what we're looking at. And I'm sure it will for y'all as well. Now that first map was looking very good for both teams. I honestly think it could have gone any way, especially with that overtime play, that consistent back and forth, just making sure that they stay away from their goal. Um, as long as possible, I think was really important to see. Yeah, I th uh, I think it was just really cool uh, seeing how well they were able to hit their shots. Uh, I, th I think they really got their angles. Now we're going to go back into this to game for the bit. second round. King Julian right off the bat having a great control over this ball. Now Fuzzy is going to get it out there. They're going to come really close to that goal, but, you know, three players – are on that offensive site right now. King Julian gonna boom it back down to this yellow side, to RPI side. He is gonna get a demolition right off of the bat. See, King Julian, he's not only afraid to get those, um, not only afraid to score, he is also willing to go in for those demolitions as well because that really helps the team out. Now, Fuzzy going to be caught in a pinch right there, but he is eventually going to get the ball out of there. All right, looks like the ball going back over to RPI side. That was a, a great um, boom downfield. You know, Waffle pushing it into this corner, but Geo is going to be there. Oh, almost would have made it in the goal, but the set positioning was just a little off. See, the thing is, Fuzzy right now will be alone downfield before King Julian is able to get to him. And as soon as King Julian does, the ball is going to go back into their um, section of the field. That's why this boost control is so important. For sure. Uh, if you all don't play this game, boost is the number one thing to manage. Mm -hmm. Now, Geo... Unable to follow that ball anymore since he did go up that wall. Just lost control of it. Now, Brother Nature is going to hit it just a little bit. King Julian's going to be able to um, receive that ball from him. Going to the blue side, Uno Waffle there to just absolutely launch the thing. Uh, Geo just unable to make it connect by any means. He just had to fall off of that ball there. Fuzzy's going to have a good control before it's taken away from him. They just they can't keep their hands on the ball for too long. Mattify getting it off of that wall into King Julian's hands once again. Going over to blue, but Uno Waffle came in at, at the right time to save it. Uno Waffle is going to get a demolition right there. That's four. <laughs> I'm keeping count. I'm sorry, but I am. <laughs> you totally should. Brother Nature following this wall or this ball right off of the back wall. That is hard to say. 
Now, once again, it is going to be stuck in this corner, but I'm sure it's not going to stay in there for too long. That is something I've seen consistently with these two teams. The, whenever it is in that corner, they make sure that they get it out of there as quickly as possible because sometimes you can see how it is able to stick in there for such a long time to the point where it really gets annoying. But they just want to make sure that they're generating these passes as quickly as possible. Gio having an okay, sh a pretty good shot on the goal, but he is going to be, um, they are going to be defending it. Looks like Brother Nature was setting up for a shot, but wasn't able to execute it enough. Oh, Geo missing that ball right there. A great save coming in from Geo and um, Brother Nature. We're just seeing some really good uh, defense from both teams here. Fuzzy going to go ahead and get it out of there, but it does come back. You know, Waffle trying to get control of this ball, but he's pretty low on boost right now. And now he's out. That gives Geo the p chance to get onto that ball. But thankfully, Fuzzy is going to be able to get it out of his grasp just a little bit. But he does get demoed. All right, looks like all right, Mattify hitting it back over to their side and then going back over to Boyle. Uh, you know, Waffle trying to get it over to Orange. All right, all these things keep happening. <laughs> now there is less than a minute left on the clock and both teams are still at zero they're gonna have to score and they're gonna have to make it soon or we'll have to go into another overtime which i'm sure that um they're not afraid to do but i'm sure that nobody wants to just puts more pressure on 30 seconds left on the clock now we watch fuzzy ride this wall but before he's able to get the ball from brother nature he's just gonna boom it down Mattify is just going to try to rotate the ball a little bit there. And Geo Ooh. able to get a score for RBI. That was, now, that took some communication, I can tell. Uh, Mattify and Brother Nature really just set up that shot so Perfectly. Geo could jump in. Right. Now, I'm not sure if MSMU is going to be able to get another goal in or get a single goal in before um, the timer runs out. I, with Rocket Week, you never know. I, Oh, wow, Brother Nature, able to get the second score on them very quickly. Huh. Huh. <laughs> I'm not sure that MSMU is going to be able to bring this back. In 10 seconds, I, well, I have seen it been done before. Uh, yeah, but... it is Rocket League. A lot of things can happen. Tides can turn very quickly in this game since it is so quickly paced. Seven seconds left on the clock, though. I'm not looking too hopeful. Mattify is going to have a pretty good control of the ball. Geo and Brother Nature are going to be working together in this corner to push it out. Wanting to get it on the ground as quickly as possible. Ooh. Whoa. They Jeez. almost would have had three goals. <laughs> that, ooh, that could have been scary. That was like a second away from them able to get the three. Now we did see that Brother Nature was able to get one and Geo as well. These demolitions, Mattify bringing his weight right here with those demos, getting four of that round. Now, okay. whenever we look at the compositions of these two teams, we see that they're pretty evenly matched. I will say um, neither is too dominant on offense or defense. So they're just able to have this good game and these constant back and forth. I'm sure it's exhausting for them. Oh, for sure. Uh, just switching back and forth from defense to offense. Uh, I mean... I'm just amazed on their skills because, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they got to be communicating pretty well in order to execute all of that. Right. And we did see there that Geo had those four shots on goals, none of them able to connect, but um, he definitely pulled that weight that round. Uh, King Julian, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure his score was only 58. Um, we saw him being super assertive, super dominant in that first map or that first game. Um, and he definitely just fell back there just a little bit. I'm wondering if he just decided to play more of the offensive position since they didn't want to get scored on nearly as much. Um, it did end up happening anyway. It's possible. Uh, never know what goes on. And taking things off, uh, I think Orange Team got first hit on that. I couldn't tell. Now King Julian is going to be more aggressive, it seems like. Fuzzy is able to get the ball out, though, before he can get his hands on it. Uno Waffle falling, hitting that ball. Geo, Ooh. a beautiful um, shot on goal, almost making it. Brother Nature's gonna Waffle be there for the coming game. in. G 
Gio just following this ball as closely as possible, but Uno is able to take it out from underneath his feet or his wheels. <laughs> About to say, what kind of cars have feet? <laughs> now, right now, they're going to be doing a bit of a ceiling read since the ball is very high in the air right now. Fuzzy, oh, Ooh. Fuzzy, I thought he was going to be able to stop that, but he's unable to as Brother Nature is able to get that first um, goal. There we go. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that was what eight demos? You're keeping count. Ah, crap. That's right. That ball doesn't go towards anyone's goal. Instead, it just decides to be pushed to the side as they both hit it. Same trajectory. Mattify climbing this wall. Fuzzy missing it. Just barely. But Uno Waffle's going to make up for Ooh. it. Almost would have went in if those two weren't there. Mm -hmm. And that's nine demos. King Julian being in an uncomfortable position right now, but it works for him as Uno Waffle is able to get another or he's able to get the score for MSNU. The way that is lined up perfectly, Geo just able to get that shot off of the wall. I'm sure they were thinking Brother Nature was gonna go for it, but instead it was um, Uno Waffle, or Fuzzy going for it, sorry. All coming over to Blue's side, Mattify going in the air to try to stop it from going anywhere else so that they can set up for a shot, it looks like. But Uno Waffle just riding it all the way to their side. Going in for that half flip there. Geo gonna try to get this ball away from King Julian, but he's just unable to. Now Fuzzy didn't really work out in his favor there. He's going to try to go back for the ball, though, but Uno Waffle is unable to get to it in time. I'm sure they wanted to pass off each other. Brother Nature able to get the second score of this game. Watch that again. It hit. Okay. Ooh. Went right by him. Mm. Nothing he really could have done there. He was behind that ball. Uno Waffle getting a great 50 there getting it in his hands, getting it into his teammates' hands, passing it to Fuzzy. King Julian is gonna be ready to intercept the ball. And Fuzzy doing getting... his best to just try and set up uh, one of the two for a decent shot. Ooh. Mattify is going to be sticking back just a little bit. Fuzzy unable to connect it there. We're going to see if he's able to, and he finishes it. Brother Nature having a great control of that ball right there, just following it in the air. Oh, that was clean. Wow. And it just falls right off of that um, crossbar just into the goal, into their hands. RPI having a great lead so far on MSMU. Brother Nature might have another clean shot. And yeah, Whoa. another clean shot in the goal. Uh. I think this is the fourth. I, th I don't think anyone else has scored other than Brother Nature on RPI's side. Yeah. We'll find out uh, at the end of this. I know that. He is pulling his weight right now. Just He thought that King Julian was the aggressive one in the beginning of this game. No, he decided to take the reins here. Just going in. Now, Geo is going to miss that ball right there. Wasting a lot of his boost, but... Gonna be able to pick it up now brother nature able to get that ball just a little bit away from fuzzy king julian falling closely but uno waffle just steals it away from their hands and able to get a second goal for msmu now it may have said uno waffle scored but i think that was a that may have been a little bit of a self goal mm -hmm. which those are not always the best yeah but it happens. I mean, honestly, it's inevitable with the way the trajectory goes in this game, the way how like how quick it is. Sometimes you just can't get out of there in enough time. Brother Nature going to follow this ball closely along with King Julian. As he was trying to do his best to keep it over on the orange, and I think we just saw two back-to-back -back demos. <laughs> that three. King Julian, oh, just... MSMU just having great control over this ball right now as two players from um, RPI were down. 
it really gave them an opening spot for them to just be able to push in and get the ball quickly as downfield as they could. Now, King Ooh. Julian getting the third goal for MSMU, closing that gap slowly but surely. We do have a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock, though. MSMU could still come back to tie it, and then they might go into overtime again. Mm -hmm. But you never know. RPI does have a two-game lead right now, and it is a best of seven. Fuzzy going in. Oh, he just gets contempted by Geo. You know, Waffle following this ball, following the ceiling, but he's just unable to get it to where, well, he's able to get his car to where he wants it to be. One minute remaining on the clock. Brother Nature able to get the fifth goal of this game. He is on fire. You see, Ooh. just no one was there. May have been a little miscommunication on Blue's side, but I mean, not much you could have done like with where they were. Mm -hmm. uh, Mattify just hitting it straight down on the boil. Geo was right there by his side, following with him. Brother Nature gets thrown off just a little bit, but Mattify is able to get it back. 30 seconds remaining. Oh, and Geo! Finally! Ooh. Another score for RBI that is not from Brother Nature. <laughs> just, that was a beautiful shot from Geo. The fact that it was so far away from the goal, but nothing was able to stop it. No players from MSMU were able to just get it. Brother Nature having some great aerials. A flip reset happening. Oh, fuzzy though. That would have been a clip. 16 minutes or 16 seconds. Wow, left on the clock. As much as I hate to say it, I don't think they can come back, but I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot happen. I'm sure this ball yeah. is going to hit the ground though, but I'm, they don't want it to. And there we go. Ooh. RPI bringing them to a third, having a um, 3 0 lead. Wow, Brother Nature just a beast in that game with five scores. Wow. Sheesh. Or five goals, yeah. Then Uno Waffle on MSMU really bringing in the points on their side. Mm -hmm. See, the and, thing, uh, when you look at Brother Nature's goals and you also look at his shots, he had nine shots on goal. He was not afraid to get in there and get to that goal and get to that ball. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. He saw a target on the ball and he was ready to just go in for it, no mm -hmm. matter what would happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was just, that was nasty from Brother Nature. That, that kind of hurt to see. <sighs> a little bit, yeah, but not the worst. Uh, I feel like MSMU could definitely learn from their mistakes and just possibly come back. I definitely think that they are going to have to work on their offense. I don't think defense is really a problem. They've really been able to get to um, RPI's goals, but the problem is they're unable to just completely finish it. And as soon as the ball gets close to their goal, they're unable to just rotate back as quickly as they want to. They're going to have to work on those quicker rotates, and they're just going to have to work on their offensive positions and stay closer to the goal if they want to bring this back. All right, jumping in the... Fourth. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm losing track here. <laughs> You're good. There's some just action right off of the bat, being in MSMU's goals. They are able to get it out of there. As I just said, they want to work on this offensive position. They want to work on these offensive rotates. A demolition immediately going on. You know, right, Waffle's going to fall back. I've seen 10 demos. This is a good game. <laughs> This game makes it. Fuzzy, unable to get the ball. He tried to jump a little bit, but Geo oh, is able ooh. to get a, a goal. Wow. Just really precise uh, timing on that hit. Mm -hmm.
Looks like Geo got the first hit again. He's doing awesome with that. You know, Waffle able to throw it off balance just a little bit. Mattify, though. That's what we need to see. We need to see some more action from Mattify. I mean, he is doing great. Um, but we're really just not seeing him getting a lot of goals right now. A lot of big saves. But I'm sure that he's definitely pulling his weight whenever it comes to this team since they do have such a good lead so far. Brother Nature getting it out of this corner, but I think that was fuzzy just pushing it back in there once again. Fuzzy hitting it towards their goal, but no one was there to help connect it. You know, Waffle just bouncing it up in the air a little bit. Fuzzy trying to keep the ball from going any further in the blue. King Julian watching it over the orange side. Ooh, Geo coming really close there. I thought he was gonna, um, I think that was nearly a own goal score. But thankfully he was able to stop it. King Julian getting that rotate in mid air just to flip it back. Going for another stop. Brother Ooh. Nature able to save it though. You know, Waffle out of boost. He's not really going to be able to follow them much. Oh, uh, once again, another demolition coming in. Geo having great control of that ball. I think that was honestly really impressive to see, but just wasn't able to keep it for too long. Uno Waffle, that was a very, very close call right there. They're really just trying to get that ball out of the corner, but it doesn't look like either team will let it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, neither team is just having a great control over the ball right now before it gets taken from them. I mean, that is what makes the game so interesting, though. It's really what gives us a good game. Geo coming in with the launch on the blue side. Uno Waffle coming in to just knock it off course. A great pass from Uno Waffle to King Julian so they can just get it out of there. Now Fuzzy is going to be back there um, trying to get some control of it, but Geo able to steal it from him, really. Now three, that's a triple commit right there. A double commit from MSMU. I think that's really what they need to see if they want to get their um, score up. Geo alone in that corner. His teammates just being back in their offensive position. Geo so far is the only one who's been able to score this game. One minute remaining on the clock, and RPI does have a one-goal lead. We're going to see if this is going to change at all as um, MSMU is going to feel more of this pressure going on. Oh, Ooh. Mattify able to get them a second goal, bringing it to 0-2 right now. Getting it right over King Julian. Yep. Uh, I bet that doesn't feel good. <laughs> If I am correct, this is the last game that RPI needs to win, and then they'll be done. True, but there is about 40 seconds left, so MSMU does have time to come back if they need, to, if they want it back. Uh huh. Right now it's just getting launched, just a, just about on the orange side, but. Ooh, brother nature able. All three players on RPI side right now each have one goal right now, and that's just something a lot of teammate a lot of teamwork going on. All right, 27 seconds left. Uh, I think it's I think it's pretty much game here, but like I've said, Rocket League anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Brother Nature just barely missing that ball, going right above it, I think. It's a really weird angle. I mean, MSMU, I don't think they're gonna have time to really achieve anything here, but 
It does go towards their goal. King Julian gonna try to get the save, but Mattify! <gasps> One second left on the clock. The way that Brother Nature had a great control wow. over this ball, and he's just able to pass it on to Mattify. Mattify just coming in, sweeping it into that goal. One second left on the clock. As soon as that ball hits the air from the first hit. There we yeah, go. That's RPI taking the win. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, this is week six for um, ECEA, and RPI is going to take this one. The thing is, though, I think MSMU gave up really, like, they gave a really good fight. It didn't really feel one-sided. It didn't really feel like it went into RPI's, um, it was in their corner the whole time, you know? I really think it could have gone either way. Um, Mount St. Mary's had a absolutely great offense and defense. So I do have to give them props for that. It it was honestly a great game. Even though they weren't able to get any um, games off of RPI, I think they did a really good job holding their own. I agree. Uh, they really did well with their defense, I could tell. And their mm -hmm. their offense was just perfect. Um, That's really just... They just... They just had to, I think they had to work on their communication for a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with this game. It's so hard to communicate considering how quick it is. Um, I think both teams did absolutely amazing, though. GG's to RPI. I mean, 4 0. I don't. I, uh. I didn't think it was going to go 4 0. I thought for sure MSMU would have brought in at least a couple points. But, exactly. Uh, right. I think they both did an amazing job, though. But I completely agree whenever I I thought that it was a pretty even game, you know? Oh, for sure. Good games. A lot of demolitions, which we wanted to see. I, I saw over 10, I'll admit it. <laughs> We're happy with it. We'll take it. No, honestly, great games. Um, once again, that offense from MSMU just needed a little bit work. A little bit of work. Um, I think RPI's – it wasn't even that their offense was bad. RPI's was just honestly amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I've never seen gameplay like that before, just how they were able to really, in time, get everything down, their aerials, their demos, just everything. Right. It was honestly a great game. Now we are going to have a little bit of a break and we are going to go straight into an interview after this. So make sure y'all stick around to see that. Uh, I kept competing. Eventually I made it on to some of the top teams. Um, both, uh, I was in co-ed teams, um, played in ESCA invite, which is now the equivalent of ESL, uh, ESL pro league. Um, and also played on some co-ed teams. Uh, played with teammates like uh, Miss Harvey Potter, who is now the coach of Evil Geniuses, uh, Alice Liu that can play with Co Complexity's Valorant team. Um, some of the things that I learned uh, in my competing journey, um, it's not just about um, my, my physical skill about in the game, not just how quick you could react to something, um, but communication, teamwork, these things are so so important um, at Valorant Champions right now. I get the opportunity to listen into the teams and listen to their communication. Um, it's amazing um, how they refine their craft and refine how they communicate with their teammates. Um, it's something so fascinating. So I encourage you, one of the things I, I like to tell up and coming players is record your team's come and listen back. Did you give the right calls? Um, could you have done better calls? Could you those calls have been shorter and more precise? And those are the one some of the things I learned um, as a player. Um, throughout that playing journey, uh, one of the highlights was in 2012 when I traveled to Paris and competed in the eSports World Cup, which was the top top tournament for women at the time. Uh, and we came in and we won uh, the world championship, which was so exciting. It's so amazing to play in front of crowds of 
thousands of people. Um, they were cheering against us because we were playing against a European team and we were an American team. But that feeling is just like unlike anything else when you can raise that trophy and they play the national anthem of your country. Um, I hope many of you playing in this competition will get to experience some of that um, one day. It's, it's truly an honor. Um, some of the other things besides, besides competing and, and winning trophies, um, I played in 250 tournaments <laughs> over the years. I believe that's the most for any woman. It's hard to keep track in the early days, but um, beyond competing, I, I work in the industry. So I'm a vice president uh, at Dignitas. It's one of the oldest operating esports teams. Um, we had for many years, one of the top women's teams in the world. Uh, I also founded uh, a women's initiative called Radiant and operate women's esports tournaments just like this. Um, and I've realized how important that is. Um, a lot of people will ask, why do the women need their own tournament? Why can't, why can't they just play with the guys? And my response back is, if you look at a game like Valorant, um, there's a reason why there are so many women competing in this game compared to other esports titles. It's because these women's initiatives exist um, and they give women um, something to work towards, something to get started. Um, it, it gives them a more safe environment, uh, a harassment-free environment um, to kick off their careers. And I hope one day we don't need women's tournaments. That's the end goal is because more women are competing and more women are gonna start to shine in those tier one teams. Um, my last point is, as I said, working in the industry, there's so many different job opportunities um, you don't have to be the best player in the world. You don't have to be comfortable on camera and be a content creator. Um, you can work in business side, marketing, advertising. You can work in PR. You can work um, even in the sciences. There's sports psychology jobs. There's, there's team chefs. There's nutritionists. Um, one of my positions is being an observer. Like I said, I met Valor and Champions right now. And, it, you know, if you're dual monitoring and you're watching both this event and Valorant Champions at the same time, after this, I'm about to hop in and be the inner, uh, the observer for Exit versus Fnatic, essentially an in-game director. There's a million different production jobs as well. Um, but I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to hopefully inspire you um, to continue to pursue uh, esports and gaming um, if that's something you love. Uh, and then my final comment is, is just a reminder that, um, you know, you're going to be in game sometimes and people are going to say terrible things. Um, I hope that ends someday, but um, just know that no matter what they say, you belong here. Uh, you deserve this. You deserve to play this game. You deserve to be in this competition. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much for happen having me. I can't wait. Um, I know there's going to be some superstars. I hope I see you one day at Valorant Champions kicking ass. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. TTPS colon slash slash twitter.com slash septilence. Don't put that in. I'll get in trouble. So that's that's worth it. That's worth it. Did I get too close to the camera on that one? Too close. A little bit too close. Should too I? Should close. I? Oh, should I back up a little bit? Okay, sorry about that. My bad. I've been awake for probably close to 32 hours. Like I have to like hold my keyboard like the normal way. Because if I do it, I feel like I have arthritis if I hold my keyboard like that. It blows my mind. I can never do that. Like, this kid, this guy right here, he's got his keyboard like off at an angle. His isn't that extreme. There's a kid all the way down on the far end who has his keyboard all the way at like a horizontal. Yeah. That's really cool. They're gonna be at that table right over there. Public information. Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> this isn't live, so it doesn't matter. It's not live, but like you and I know. Yeah, we know. I'm not gonna tweet it's it. Like awesome. What game do you play? Smash Bros. Who do you play? Is it embarrassing? Is it like Villager? Yeah. <laughs> is it Villager? Am I spot on? Oh my god. Is it the Ice Climbers? No. Is it Game & Watch? No. Is it Pichu? No. Is it Wario? No. I can keep going. I think yeah, I can name every character in the game. I believe in you. Is it, did I say the Ice Climbers already? Yeah, you said them. Is no, it them? them? Is it them a second time? No. Okay. All right. Um, oh, is it one of the Lynx? Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is that is rough. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character. Not played very often. Is it We Fit Trainer? Oh my god! Oh my. I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. Hi. So Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I... <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> 
Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, no, no. Bowser Jr., We Fit, and... You told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where's my main support at? Who are we playing this weekend? Uh, a lot of Brig. A lot of Brig, really? Brig Lucio, probably. Brig Lucio, really? I shouldn't say that too loud. I don't want to give all your strategies. It's over under. What do you mean over under? Like, like, do we think we're going to podium? Do we think we're going to come in last place? Not last place. Not last place. Certainly not last. What about like fifth place? That's doable. That's doable. That's that's winnable. Third place. <laughs> third, third mm, place. That's where that's where things that's get place. dicey. That's very doable. Okay. First place. That's very doable. First place. Very doable. Love it. That's the mindset. That's what he loves to hear. Yeah. Oh my god. Hold on. Cut the cameras. Well, who are you? Hello. Oh, Santoro. Oh my god. I saw you earlier. I saw the back of your shirt. And I was like, I was like, I know that name. I know him. It's a quick play game. They, they Q snap each other at land. I thought it was a scrim. This is unlucky. Are you actually a villager player? Yeah. How do you feel about villager being notably worse in Smash Ultimate than they were in Smash 4? Uh, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? You never played Smash 4? No. Oh, that's all right. Nobody, nobody's going to hold that against you. Now, who do you play? I play Robin. Okay, wow. Did you know Robin has the lowest pick rate in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I was gonna Come on, the LEDs, it looks just like Samus. Huh? Do you disagree? I guess I can see The it. Samus vibe. Show the controller to the camera. We're interviewing. This is recording, by the way. Surprise. No, my controller. Who do you play? I play Peach. Oh, oh, wow. I like that. Who do you play? I play the Shodos, mostly Kazi. No, you lose against Kirby. Yeah, lose against Kirby. That's just like a statistics thing. Yeah. It's maybe. maybe. <laughs> this is a death match. I think they're all in the same one. They're all on Icebox. Are they, oh, they, are they all in the same death match? Maybe. Who knows? I feel like none of them can hear me. I want to like approach somebody, but no one, no one can hear. They all have both their headphones on. What's up? How do we think we're doing? I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's your kitty? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 6 right now. Oh, hey, that's third, dude. That's better than I expected. Who's, who's bottom frag right now? I want to go talk to them. Ian? Hey, how do we think we're doing so far? Uh, you know, it could be better. Could be better? You're one of those rough days? Well, you know. Let's go find more people to harass. Yeah. Where's, Bo where's Boise State? Who's your favorite to play? Oh, uh, right now, it's got to be either Chamber or Breach. Man. What country is Cypher from? Oh, dude. Um, it's Moroccan, right? It is Morocco! Oh, my God. I don't think anyone is going to get that. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right. See you later. Let's go harass Boise State more. Who is this? What school is this? Boise? This is Boise. Oh, man, that's okay. Boise still got really good odds. A large bagel, one of their tank players, Nerdy Bird, they're off tank, both of them not here. A little bit scary, for being honest. Getting warmed up, getting ready to cast some players. No, okay, not cast, interview. Change your mindset, change your mindset. Words. Well, you no, but last words until we until we come back. Oh, okay. Because we're leaving. Enjoy. Oh, that was good, that was good. Anything from you? How are you doing, Polly? Awesome, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Welcome to ECAC Top Plays of the Week. This is Rod, your favorite host, back at it again with more stellar plays from Collegiate Esports. Special thanks to our partners at Esports U for the additional coverage. Now let's hop straight into it. Starting off this week at number 8, we have Torchy showing aerial dominance. They show that you're going to have to work a little bit harder if you want to get back on their stage. Now you've got to mix up your timings getting back onto the stage. Toilichi is looking for something, able to still find the jab, oh. and the foil is going to be. Next up, we have Cabinus, showing us what impact on a support player really looks like. With the timing of a Lucio God, they come in to claim the All right, welcome back. Uh, we're back from break. We are about to do an interview with RPI's Mattify. Oh, hey. All right, Mattify. So, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, so... Um... Now, a couple questions for you. How did you prep going in for this game? Did you decide to do anything different from what you would normally do going into a game since it is MSMU? Uh, did you have different strategies or anything? Uh, not really. We just prepped our standard uh, methods, about half an hour of training alone and then half an hour of training together as a team. It's pretty good to have that balance. Yeah. Uh, how did you feel, uh, like, as you were playing, how did you feel going into it? Uh, 
I was feeling pretty nervous knowing it was going to be streamed, but I was uh, confident and uh, focused. That's really something you have to stick with, especially with that game, since there's so much going on all the time. You really just want to lock in. Now, um, that first game, we had a over five minute overtime. <laughs> um, and then after that, we pretty much, those last couple games, there was pretty much just like no overtime at all. Um, how do y'all think y'all really came back from that? That five minute overtime was really big. And I thought we were going to continue to see that throughout the game, but y'all were just able to shut those overtimes down before they were able, even able to happen. Um, so what did y'all change there? Yeah, first game, I think uh, nerves were high for us. And um, we were able to uh, steady ourselves throughout the rest of the series and uh, maintain consistency, communication. And so, yeah, we were able to really bring out the best with each other. And uh, first game, you know, we were having trouble with consistency with uh, shooting and uh, nerves were high. So, yeah, I would say that's the main difference. Well, y'all were definitely able to bring it back there and collect y'all's thoughts. That was really impressive to see on how y'all went from that five minute overtime to just having a great run. Yeah. Uh, so with this being week six of eight, uh, how are you guys feeling going forward into your future matches? Yeah, uh, we're feeling pretty confident. I think we're gonna we're gonna do great. Yeah. Good. That confidence is something you really want to have. Uh, all right. Uh, that's all of the questions that we have or we can think of. Uh, real quick, do you have anyone that you want to shout out here? Shout out to uh, my the, my Rocky League boys. Shout out to the Queensbury boys, my family. And uh, yeah, that's all. All right. Well, great games. Thank you for doing this interview with us today. Uh, thank you. All right. So that will be everything for Esports U tonight. We are finished with that last game, MSMU versus RPI. RPI taking that game. Now that is their sixth game out of eight. So they have a couple more games left until the season is over. Um, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate all of y'all's support. And we will see y'all in the next one. See ya. As we are going to try to find out that little nugget of information, Swax is going to drop this one down and give us a tie game here in game number two. Gets that nice little touch over the defender, Peter. As an Astromane myself, nothing brings me more joy than watching Zeno hold it down on the C site with a nice 4K to secure the second round of the half. Fine, there's a 50 50 angle oh there, a beautiful down. spray down Let's onto three. Players remaining. come in for the rotate from the rest Wait, of the map right. control, and a beautifully played round by FS. He capped off by a nice old. Now, at the number four spot, we see that luck is a skill when Post gets two back to back kickoff goals. All it took was six seconds to go from a deficit to the lead. That is comeback potential. Other ways. I don't, what? Okay, so Warda actually messed up their kickoff. They 100% did not mean to land like that and then just happened to get a wave dash into it. Hey, listen, fortune favors the bold and sometimes it's better to have dumb luck than to not be lucky at all. So we'll take it 100%, especially if they get another no. one. Kabuki to tally it on and they're proving it isn't just one. Coming back into Smash, we have Bryce showing the ledge guard of the gods. It took a couple Gordos to nail it, but this clip truly ended in perfection. Nope, not a footstool in sight, unfortunately. I'm just gonna be Ooh. looking for some sort of an edge guard here now. Oh! That Gordo is right oh! in the way, and Bryce gonna be able to get the. Conrad came into this round swinging. They really showed what happens when you combine the skill of a great player and the blessing of the RGX Vandal. It worked out so well. I mean, just a double kill already in their favor. Which so far the sheriff, I mean, has been truly impressive. And unfortunately, he was not been there to follow up. Conrad, now looking for the A, he's already able to find three, looking for two more. There's the fourth, and it's up to the tail to save the day. Conrad goes in deep. Oh, they're able to find it. Conrad. Finally, at the number one spot this week, 
Frosty lays down the law with a stunning barrage. What a way to tell the enemy to get off my point. Frosty to move in, unabated, unhindered. Here comes the Whoa. rocket barrage, and it's lighting up the scene Woo. with four. Well, that wraps it up for me. This has been another fantastic week of ECAC Top Plays of the Week. As always, follow us on Twitter and catch us live on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. You can find us live on Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. EST or Wednesdays at 7. Thanks again to our partners at Esports U for providing all the additional coverage for us to show you. This has been Rod, the best host of this season. I'm just saying, and I'm signing off. Again, that, that's why we're here, right? This is why every, a lot of people are trying to figure out, you know, how do we replicate what you guys are doing? How do we, you know, how do they do what you guys are doing to a degree? Or why are you guys doing what you're doing to a degree? But you know, to kind of, I think, focus in then a little bit more, I, I want to talk about gameplay a little bit before we jump into to business and, and all of the other stuff, you know, Jensen, this one, this one's for you, right? I want to talk a little bit about this because to, to someone like me who's, you know, who's traditionally a League of Legends fan and all that, I know that you've been a coach that's been, you know, all over the world. You've worked with a lot of different professional teams and different regions. Um, my my question, I I I I really want. I think a lot of people want to know how did you end up at Maryville and, and why North like a North American collegiate college? What was the draw? Or what what brought you here? How did you get to this point? Um, when I first came to NA, I worked with the models uh, with the academy team, and I realized that there's no culture challenges that exist in. It's very unique to any any esports, right? Where there's this very interesting intersection, uh, because in unlike traditional sports in esports, uh, players they don't start training with under a structure or, or a system or a coach uh, from a very early age, which is what which is what happens if you want to pick up any other sport, right? Like you start going to community events or whatsoever, and then you start developing your skills and your literacy of the game from the from the age of six or seven, and you're very used to working in a team environment, a coaching environment. But in esports and for League of Legends, a lot of times uh, players, they go through a, they, they go up, they climb the ranks in solo queue where everything is basically self-taught. And then all of a sudden they need to be placed into a team environment. And I realized that this is something that the Asian teams got right, where they had this these B teams, this, they have the B houses in Korea and Taiwan, um, you would spend almost close to a year just being a understudy or training partner for the team before you even join an academy team in the first place. And uh, in China, they have like these massive uh, beating systems with like lots of players in them. The moment you hit a certain rank on the ladder, they fly you in. Uh, you are then boot camping for a month there at the facility. And depending on how well you do, uh, they then decide whether to regain you on as a training uh, partner or as a trainee in whatever capacity given how well you perform in those scenarios. So um, the West was very lacking in all of this. And culturally, to do the same things and try to replicate the B-house environment or what they're doing in China or Taiwan would not be possible to do. Uh, but the West has a very successful model of developing sports and talent, especially in America, when that, that is in the collegiate space. So I looked at this, I saw the resources that was available. And uh, when then, uh, when Kuroki pitched his vision to me, it's like, yeah, this is this is what I think should be the future for development in the any ecosystem for esports. Oh, right on. And I think, well, maybe maybe let's follow up on that a little bit then. Because Dan, okay, so Dan, you you know, you pick up Jensen, you you've got this going. Um, I think that's going to be my my question then is, or to any other schools that want to be competitive like you guys on that level, is this something that we should be expecting to see in the future? Right? Is this now? you know, the, the standard that, that you guys, you know, Jensen, you and Dan, do you guys feel that this, if, if every college of, across the nation is starts doing this, if they start, you know, recruiting coaches like Jensen and, and trying to build this atmosphere, is this going to be the, the next standard or is this something that's very successful that, obviously it's proven to work, but is it sustainable? Is it possible for everyone or maybe not everyone, but right, the, the greater sense of the industry and the ecosystem, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, it's a it's a dream of mine, obviously, to get to a point in the future where uh, every university has an esports team that's taken seriously, and uh, every day they report to practice, it's an improvement 
driven mindset across the whole program. Um, I think for me though, like the reason isn't necessarily like to see like a March madness with millions of dollars flowing through it. For me, it's a little bit more simpler than that. The reason why this is my vision is just because, uh, it's best for player development and just players in general. Um, what we see in the, in tier two ecosystems, almost across the industry, uh, that's like below Academy, I would say like right before you, I, I would almost, I would consider Academy professional, uh, because you're, you're making a salary, higher salary than exists in a lot of semi-pro sports actually. Uh, but in the tier two ecosystem, you kind of go from like your parents' bedroom, making no money on a discord server with a coach that hasn't been certified by any national body, uh, to playing Academy. And, and that's horrifying to me. So, uh, while I don't see collegiate as being, or maybe maybe it does end up being this way, but but it doesn't have to be the definitive path to pro. I want it to at least be an option, like a parallel.